The Comedy Store would like you to know that the views and opinions expressed in this podcast are strictly those of the speakers or authors and do not necessarily reflect or represent the views and opinions held by the Comedy Store and its affiliates. Found out I'm not a girl in Michigan. Are we on? <laughs> All, right. All right. This is exciting. Guys, welcome. Mm-hmm. I like how the tone of your voice changed. To the Are we on? Uh, we're on. Hey. Uh-huh. I sat right on my nuts. I got uh-huh. high pitch. It's time to Guys, change. So have you done it without him before? I've done it without Rick. And then he just kind of rolls in. He, yeah, he's uh-huh. all over the place. That's all right. Um, yeah, he, uh, he's, fl- whatever, he's got kids, so he's got to put them to bed. It's a whole thing. How's his, how's nervous. his hands? His hands? Yes. What does that mean? Well, he's, he's, he has a sweating thing. You know? Oh, I did not know that. You didn't know I that. I didn't know so. that either. You didn't know that he's got like a, uh, you know, he's, he's got a, what's it called? <laughs> you know, when you have sweaty sweat. guys, that's Polly Shore, in case you were wondering, yeah. and Steve Simone um, on no, the Comedy met, Store podcast. I, so, wait, he has a sweaty palm? Ask him. I don't know. I don't want to say gonna anything. I'm not going to touch him now. No, but I don't want to say anything. I just hope he comes in wearing a leather jacket with the collar popped in shades <laughs> now that he's off the road with Chris Rock. And he's like, What's up, nerds? Hey, Simone, park my car. Oh. And he throws me the keys. <laughs> like, that would be me, incredible. myself, and Ro- Irene. I'd be like, Okay, no, Rick. Right away, Mr. Ingram. <laughs> I want to give him a hug. I haven't seen him in so long. No, I, I never even thought. Maybe the sweaty hands, though, it helps gripping his kids. That could be a good thing. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Or is that How do you know he has sweaty hands? Yeah, how, there, what did there, he do? Uh, you got to ask him. Maybe he doesn't want anyone to know. Oh, oh there he isn't. Okay. That's there not him. Uh, do you remember when me, Rick, and Pete Carboni opened up for you at the San Jose Improv? Yes. And it's where Rick started his Wait, Argus impression. Wait, which one's impression. fucking Pete Carboni? Oh, the weird the looking talk- dude. Oh, yeah. Oh, right? he's a sweet set. He talked yeah, like yeah, 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 yeah. this. Hey, he's really so- Mitzi wanted to pair him up with, was it Ari or Dave Taylor? I don't know. She wanted, because they were both really tall and mm-hmm. awkward, and she thought it would be a great, great team. Right? He was great. great. Carboni's hilarious. I love all those guys. One of the funniest. But you don't do it anymore. No so you know he what? quit? I think he either quit or just went to writing. I know just- he was making yeah. Or commercials. He a was lot of commercials. A, he right. made a great yeah. living as a commercial actor for a while. Yeah, he's like a Kevin West. Yeah, remember Kevin West yes, used to yes, do a shit ton of yeah. commercials. Yeah. Um, Is Dave Taylor coming tomorrow night? I good question. I don't mm. know. That'd be amazing. Be amazing. And if they hit Darth <laughs> Vader's music as he walks in, <laughs> bam, 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 bam. He's bam. been here since you know, like I've seen him out in the past year. So I was gonna say since COVID. Oh. So uh, he came in like right after we opened, like in the very where's, beginning. Is, where's Boone? Is Boone been back? Oh please! We, uh, people are asking. They're putting money and on. What about Bob? If he shows up. What tomorrow. about Bob? At Provia? Oh. Do you think he got an invite? Well, he should. He's the original. Hundred yeah, percent. He's the original guy. I never even thought of that. Yeah. Right now, he's probably like in the Wayne Mansion, and he's got all those green corduroy suits, like Batman, and his. <laughs> he's getting measured. It has to look tattered. Like I always hoped that he was secretly a billionaire, and he would just come here to see who was a kind person that okay. he could leave a billion dollars to. That would be amazing. But like you know, kind of like Willy they said Wonka. that about Crispy Chicken. Remember oh, that guy? Yeah. When Simone was a manager here. <laughs> <This face. laughs> I tried my best to be so nice. There was to a guy. He. I remember him. You remember crispy chicken, no. and he had like elephantitis in the nuts. Yeah. And it was giant. It was uncomfortable. Like it would, like his jeans barely went up, and he filled out an application <laughs> to get a job. Guy, right. And yep. <laughs> what did it say on the application? Chris P. Chase. His real name was Norm. Right. But uh, Super the Salad. Uh, super Sex. Remember that? I'll take the sex. No, I'll take the soup. He had that joke. But the best job application I ever saw was Jim Painters. You remember that? Uh-uh. <laughs> where, is the, where is he? Who knows? Jimmy! Wow. <laughs> he wanted me. I forget. He needed to fill out an application for something. And he was like... <laughs> He had to put down references. And for a reference, instead of Dean Gelber, he wrote down Dean Gilbert. Because he didn't even know Dean's last name. And that was his reference. And for his address, he put I down. I just love how excited one, you are. He put down 123 Main Street as his address. I was like, 
<laughs> oh my god! I don't think anybody's gonna. Steve's this. been living in the middle of Tampa. I know. Yeah, it. in between in the... Tampa and uh, Orlando. Wow, it's well, the best. Everyone, I mean, ever since the whole thing, everyone just kind of took off. I know. You it's, know, everyone. That's like, why this is a... so awesome to yeah. see everybody. Yeah. It, this is probably the biggest. I mean, the fiftieth is everybody getting out for the first. Some mm-hmm. people for the first time. Yeah. In yeah. you yeah. know what is it? Three years now. Two years. Yeah. Two, over two. It's gotta be right. It feels like ten. Mark, Steve, you haven't been here two. since what, last July. You said right. Yeah, I was here, and this is the first time LA feels almost normal. Really? The last couple of times I was here, I didn't, I was yeah. like, I. How many I people leave. did we lose? Like as far as comics moving. Oh, so you many of my moved. friends. You both moved. How was your move? How was yours? Did you like it? I like it. it. Hate I it? like Vegas. Yeah. Yeah, it's cool. Vegas is fun, and it's, it's right you know, there. It's, it feels it's like. I don't know. It's it's free. Mm. Okay. And everything's just kind of open, and you know, and and it, it, it's uh, they got Wise Guys downtown now. Oh wow! In the Arts District. That's yeah. awesome. Which is great, and um, I don't know. I'm not going to be there forever. Right. But I didn't. It's uh, like it's really it's people are really nicer, but there's also I mean there's it's like anywhere there's positives and negatives. Sure. So it's like uh, mm. the, the weather's fucked up. Yeah. And you pe- know what I mean? And like that is different. the weather that much different than it is yeah. here? I mean, it's, I mean, it's deserty. It's dry. crazy. Yeah. It's dry and windstorms. You know, wind, yeah. And it's like like in Iraq, weird. windstorms it's like that Scorpion heavy, King movie. Heavy. And uh, but the people think Vegas, they think the strip. Right. They never think of a life off it. Right. And I never seen, but when Dice lived there, um, yeah. you know, we would go there all the time and we I learned a whole I was like, mm-hmm. wow, it's a great appreciation for the real well, people there's a, that live there's in Vegas. A, it's a small town. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's really just a small town, but um, it's it's cool. Like I've been here my whole life. Yeah. yeah. You know, I've been here my whole life. And after everything with my my uh, my parents and all that stuff and COVID, I was just like, I, I just I want to be around a happy yeah. environment and right. the shit that I'm doing in Vegas in these last two years has been amazing. Yeah. You know, with my band and my podcast and, and, uh, you know, I've been able to, um, meet a whole bunch of new friends that mm-hmm. I would have never met. That's great. And I've been able to, um, uh, I don't know, just be free. You know yeah. what I mean? If, if, if it was freedom for me, That's you great. know, so it's like, uh, yeah, because this is a sensitive place for me. 100%. You know what I mean? It's just weird for me all the time here. Yeah. You know what I mean? Just because I'm, I feel like, you know, I miss my mom. Right. Yeah. So, like, you know, um, you know, when I'm here, it's like, you know, I feel her. Yeah. So it's it's a little little weird. Yeah. As a kid, yeah, did you yeah. ever think this place would last this long? Like 50 years? Um, no, I mean, I didn't ever think of that. I was just kind of a yeah. playground for me, you know. Um, well, you saw, you've been here a long time, so you see me running around. And, uh, you know, I, I, I've been here since I was four. Wow. Crazy. You know, since I was four. I got f- photos of me when I was four on stage here with wow. my dad. Um, and so it's, uh, you know, it's, uh, you know, what my dad and mom did, you know, uh, for the comedy community. It was pretty awesome. Sure. And it was uh, a timing thing and it was the right, you know, right woman mm-hmm. in the right time. And, you know, and, you know, she loved this place more than her family. hundred you know? percent. And um, but she took care of me. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? She never neglected me. She never it wasn't like, oh, fuck my kids and I'm just going to be at the store. Right. It was like, you know, I'm at the store and, hey, you, you comedians take care of my kids. Right. So I always had someone, you know, I got a, I got a nice email from Lois Bromfield. I was just mm. thinking of that. Yeah, and, and she's like an old friend. And, and I don't know. It's like, you know, even on my mom's memorial here, you know, it was kind of like uh, it was weird because, you know, you see all these people. Sure. So tomorrow you know, I'm going to be heavily medicated. Good for I you. Got my, I'm going to CVS. <laughs> No, I'm just kidding. No, I got some uh, good stuff yeah, at home yeah, yeah. if you need. <laughs> no, it's just, you know, it's different for me than most, I think. Uh, oh, 100%. yeah. This is your home. Yeah, like, so. It's, it's got to be childhood. weird. childhood. Everybody's yeah. coming yeah, in, your, in your space, yeah, if you will. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, even just being down here in this basement, I mean, I just see all, I, I, all the history of this right. place. Right. Mm-hmm. You know? I, I remember, I remember um, when I was just helping, you know, my brothers and my mom clean out the basement, I don't know, five, six, seven years ago, whatever it was. Was that like just your see, chores? <laughs> the what? Is that like no, your chore? Just That's time. funny. There's just so much shit down here. Of course. You know, and just like finding old Savannah posters. Yeah. You know, my ex girlfriend that was a porn star that killed herself because I had to clean out her whole, you know, I had to clean Place. out her whole house yeah. with Bobby actually. Mm. Oh damn. And um, 
and you know just like the history and then just seeing like old you know old uh you know ticket stubs you know and and you know it's this so was neat, stuff before when you were here i mean you've been here over 20 something years right 93 yeah so wow. so 30 I years know, almost yeah so <laughs> But like years ago, she had this uh, accountant named Youssef. Yeah. Yeah. Youssef. I met his daughter, granddaughter. Oh, wow. Okay. Remember, she she said she got in touch with you. Mm, I don't. I don't okay. Remember. She she was here and oh, she wow. was just she was oh, like yeah. my dad used to be the accountant. The accountant. Yeah. Yeah. And then she and was like, was Paul just... used to cut his ties. <laughs> <I was> yeah. <laughs> like, it's hilarious. Yeah. Yeah. He, wow. he was great. So um yeah, there's a lot of levels mm -hmm. to it. And um, it's nice. It's nice uh, doing my one man show in Vegas right now. Awesome. Um, yeah, which is awesome. Stick with the dancing yeah, or whatever you're gonna. Dancing, yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. And I have Alan Stevens open for me now out there. That's which amazing. Is awesome. Another. Uh, he's like, that's like so, family. Yeah, I mean, he's like Uncle he was Inky. at the beginning. Was Alan. Uncle Stinky or no, Inky? No, Uncle Sleezins. Oh, Sleezins. Yeah, that's what we called him, Uncle Sleezins. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Well, he was, he's, you know, he was the kind of guy that would do coke and then go right to sleep. 100%. You know what I mean? He just like, I dated someone like that. All right, I'm going like to that. sleep. Oh. You know, it's like, you know, in La Jolla. I mean, you know, I mean, dude, there's so many fucking stories with these guys. I mean, how the fuck I'm still alive? Yeah. And I'm not, I mean, I'm pretty fucked up. You know what I mean? Like mentally, I'm pretty fucked up, but I'm not fucked up, fucked up. Yeah, you're functioning. You know I mean? You're you know a functioning I mean? fucked up. Yeah, I'm a you're fu normal functioning messed up. fucked up. Yeah, but I'm definitely like, it's hard for me to have a relationship with a woman, mm -hmm. you know, like a true, like really letting someone in sure. my life, Getting you know, because everyone like him and Bobby Lee, I was like, yo, you got to have a kid. This is so stupid. Like, why don't you have a kid? Mm -hmm. And it's just really hard for me mm. to yeah, let, you know what I mean? I get to, that. Yeah. It's really, you know what I mean? Yeah. And it's I not just because I have money and I'm famous and it's not because of just that. It's just, it's something more. Of you course. Know? I don't know what it is. Your you know? legacy, like you want to keep your name alive I don't, is that why they're saying it i don't know they'll chop my dick off or something no i don't know <laughs> yeah, it's that thinking? emotional f well i don't know what it is i mean you know me you know me yeah. I, I don't know what it is it's like um, um you know what does your therapist say i haven't gotten to that section yet <laughs> uh, keep them busy on this speaking this of betterhelp.com no <laughs> can no, imagine if we um, went into a no commercial? it's it, my brother scott's that way too it's yeah, like, yeah. It, you know and, sure you know scott's that way too it's you know, some people, I guess, are not meant to be married. You know, yeah. some I'm people, that person. You're, right? You know I, what I mean? I don't it's know like, why. Don't you like to be alone at night in your bed? 100%. You know, just like you, having another person there, like next to you, is mm -hmm. fucking weird. Well, are you? Do you want to have kids? Do you want to get married? In a Steve? perfect world, all that. But stuff. he's pretty yeah. fucked up too. Oh sure. Yeah, anybody. I think, I think, we I think all anybody. Yeah, yeah. Honestly, anybody that goes on stage. It's a weird and thing. And opens up like that. We're like, all it was kind always easier up. for me to be vulnerable on stage than off stage. And I don't know mm. why. Yes. Yeah, yeah. you're more comfortable why. on stage. Yeah, more comfortable yeah. on stage With than With a bunch stage. of strangers, yeah. <laughs> of course, because people that know you, you're like, you get tense around. Exactly. They're like, oh my God, he knows everything about me. Yeah. yeah. Or yeah. I'm like, yeah, uh, yeah, they yeah, don't yeah. want to hear me. I freak out. I get yeah. nervous even on podcasts. I'm like, it's not my turn to talk. And like, like when I'm off stage or I just... I want to make sure everybody else is okay, mm -hmm. and I don't. I'm not good with anybody taking care of me, Same. and I don't know why. But mm. and like that's why I like being on stage mm. because I've heard other comedians talk about how they love the attention. I'm like, oh, for me, the stage is just another place to give. And then when I'm off stage, ah. I like, yeah, I'm like, all right, I'm gonna try my best to put joy into your heart. And then when I'm off stage, I'm like, I'm gonna try best to put joy into your heart. And like when I would date people in los angeles i i attracted a lot of more narcissistic type women <laughs> you know sense. and they were like oh this guy's gonna give me attention and do whatever i want i'm like i just want to make you happy <laughs> and now that i'm in a healthier relationship it's weird to to also receive mm. uh, like oh she, so this is a healthy healthy healthier all you're, my you're relationships also, yeah. are unhealthy -ish. yeah yeah my ex and i we got along which great. one's your ex uh ronnie i don't know if you ever met him he was everybody when we broke up here they were like <laughs> So we can't see Ronnie anymore. I'm like, what happened? When did right I now? see Ronnie? Uh, it's been a while. Oh wow, it's been That's a while. Been... You remember? Yeah. yeah. But I'm saying he was the the last person I had a serious relationship with. You know what I mean? So it's been a while. But the thing we had was we were both similar, where we didn't like sleeping in the same bed. So we would, you know, whatever. And then 
sleep in separate You'd beds. You'd fuck so and then like, go in the same. Yeah, 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 move over to your bed, buddy. Yeah. Like, and he was great. Like, mom, like mom, some pop pops. Yeah, we didn't. We, <laughs> yeah, we're not cuddlers. Like, so that was a good mm, thing. Mm. But then he was like a little jealous, so it drove me nuts. Like, mm. if I gave you guys a hug when I saw you, he'd be like, "Why are you hugging them?" I'm like, "Really." Like mm-hmm. it, it, little things like that. Mm. He had giant cocks. I really miss him. But mm. um, <laughs> I just did. I did a Mr. Roper face. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> he knows it. Um, but every once in a while, he comes here now to visit the comics because they cool. love him. And you guys like, are still buds. Um, not as close. Mm. Like as me and Andrew. Like mm-hmm. Dice being um, my second ex fiance. Mm. Uh, like we're very close because mm-hmm. our we broke up when we split up it was right after freddie died mm-hmm. so i was in a weird place and then my grandma died like oh. 20 days later so mm-hmm. i just like disconnected from mm-hmm. everything so it was he watched me like unfold and calmly just stayed around mm-hmm. i think we lasted another eight months after that maybe mm-hmm. nine and then we split up but it was we stayed so close mm-hmm. and i still stayed in his kids life and you know what I mean? So it was good, and obviously I still tour with them or well, whatever. Well, it's, it's, everyone's different, you know? Um, yeah. You know, I mean, your situation with him is that. So it's, you're, you're we also were such both good comics, friends first. But too. you're also both comics, so you're both totally, re- you know, understand each other. Yeah, so exactly. So it's not like, Ronnie's not a comic. No. Yeah. No, he's so an outsider that way. Yeah, yeah. so. So um, they, don't, they don't get it. Yeah, they but don't my, get it. But my first ex-fiance, he was a booking agent for oh, comics. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> Oh, wow. So I was like, you know, we had that, but I wasn't a comic. I was a waitress mm-hmm. just working here and working for, you know, with your mom. Mm-hmm. So I, I remember the, this one time your mom was going to hire him mm-hmm. to, he was going through some personal stuff mm-hmm. and lost his job and she was going to hire him to be the booker here. And I was sitting on the back steps, like hysterically crying on the belly room steps. Cause I was like, Oh my God, she's going to hire the literal love of my life and mm. he broke my heart in a zillion pieces mm. and now i'm gonna have to leave the comedy store but it was only like 98 mm. so i had been here a little bit but at the same time it was a home yeah. you know an adult home in la and it was my familiar space and then your mom came back and she goes he's still going through whatever he's going through so i'm not hiring him and i was like oh my god Mm. Like I didn't say anything to her. I would never say anything to hurt anybody. And she didn't see me crying or anything. Mm. She just said it to me. Where was he a booker at? Uh, he worked for William Morris. Oh, um, Bill Branca. A... Did you know oh, Bill yeah, Branca? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he worked for. Um, so that was your boyfriend. My first ex. Oh, your first. Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> yeah, he shattered my heart a million people. I would have had ten kids with him, no problem. Really? Yeah. Where is he now? Uh, is he still working in the business? I don't. I remember him. Yeah, he was great. I don't nice think. Guy. Um, he is, to be honest. I'm not sure exactly huh. what he's doing, but I know he got married and has a kid, and he's happy, and that's okay. all that matters. That's you know cool. that. He got through his unlike me and Steve situation. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not married no, either. I bet the gold <laughs> makes the chocolate taste terrible. <laughs> I mean, I have a lot of nieces and nephews, so I'm lucky. But I'm one of ten children, wow. and five of us got married and five of us didn't. Wow. Isn't mm. that weird? Like my parents were split up, so maybe that has something to do with it. Oh. I don't know, but I don't feel like I have daddy issues. But maybe I do. Mm. <laughs> Hmm. That's just me pandering, <laughs> trying to get laid. <laughs> There's some um, trucker out there just trying you to get it laid up. on the road. <laughs> do you get laid on the road? No, and I should. People are yelling at me to do that more. I like if I'm in Philly or LA, I feel safer, right? Mm-hmm. But if I'm in like Michigan, people are like, "Yeah, just put your Tinder on." I'm like, I don't have yeah. Tinder. I just. I just go outside and say, hey, who wants in? Like, nobody, I don't know how to do computer Ali, Ali oxen free. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, one of those triangles Ma Engels had for when it was time for supper. <laughs> it's, fine. it's weird that it's a vagina. Anyway, um, <laughs> it's so gross. But yeah, I don't, but people do it. People do that. And I think that's who? fucking crazy. Who? Female comics on who? the road. I'm not giving names. Really? I would never. So but... just make up, just like he made up his name of his girl. So well, make up a name and right. just tell so me a Right, so Penny story. Pangleton, okay. she'll, she'll just load in, to, like, um, would... go on to Tinder and switch the city. Penny Pangleton. <laughs> yeah, she'll <laughs> go on the Switch the city. Street. Right. And then she meets people, at, or they meet people, because there's a few of them, Pennies. And, um, and they, they go to the show. Yeah, they'll meet after the show, or they'll meet, you know, they'll come in a day early. Like, what? Uh I can't. Like, now you're 
that's crazy. Disgusting. You don't not that it, <laughs> oh a guy did it, it would be fine. What do you mean it's disgusting? Uh, d- 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 all, all that whatever. I'm a good old man. Okay, I get it. Because guys do it all the time, but guys won't use a computer. They'll just meet somebody after the show for yeah. the most part, right? Yeah. And every once in a while, like I remember we worked Vegas a lot and I'd meet somebody and I'd talk to them a little bit, but I still, I got nervous. I was like, I don't live here. You uh. know what I mean? I don't know them. Not that it's any better where you live, but I, I think you should be killed in a city that people are familiar with you so they know to pick you up and <laughs> send you where you got to be. <laughs> like, I don't know. I just have this idea of like, if you, they're already a familiar stranger that you meet online. Now you're in another state, city. What? It's crazy. It's also different now. You know, than sure. it was when you're in tw- in your twenties. Yeah, yeah. I have you know, friends. In your twenties, it's a little bit more normal just to meet someone and hook right. up. You know, <laughs> it's like you guys are just kids and you're having fun. At this age, yeah, I should be playing age, beat the little... clock, though. I mean, yeah, that's why I'm out with hurry. the bell. Yeah, I'm like, get hurry, in, yeah. hurry up before it shuts down. See, see. <laughs> when does it see. shut down? See. I don't know. They say that though, but mine isn't. It's not shutting. No. Steve, should I leave you guys alone? <laughs> what? I Susie, wanna... I apologize. Her name's for Sally my... for crying Sally. out loud. You already forgot her name. Jesus, her name. I'm not like you. You, you came out with Penny Pendleton, <laughs> like we were in a it's Groundlings a, audition. It's it was from like, a John Waters Ellen movie. <laughs> Welcome to Sunday Company. You were just like Paulie goes, fake name, Penny Pendleton. Out. Like that was. Don't you ever improv. watch uh, um, John Waters? John Waters, the from Baltimore, the crazy guy. Oh, he's the oh, best. Oh no! Yeah, he's amazing. Yes. Oh my God! He I has... saw one of his movies once, and I'm still scarred. Pecker, which one? I'm not saying. Pecker's which where one. Penny Pang. I mean, uh, Penny Pangleton's from Hairspray. Where? Which one did you? I'm see? not. Really? Yeah, it's, I was horrified. Pecker's one of my favorites. Full of grace, you would die. The grandma has a, a a Virgin Mary that she thinks speaks to her. He's a scorned Catholic. Leave him alone. He's funny. He's great. He's very funny. He was doing here shows in the main room. It was so exciting. Oh, wow. Really? A, a Christmas show. Oh, wow. And obviously it was BC before COVID, but he was packing it out. Then he'd sit on stage in the main room. People would line up and come up and take pictures with him. He was literally the nicest man ever. Mm-hmm. Like, I couldn't believe that I got to, like, at the very end, he was like, anybody from the staff want to take pictures? Like, I'm still here. I'm Troy hanging was out. Just at, Troy's out on the road with Gabe, who is the, Gabriel Iglesias? the nicest person. You have ever. to say like, it not like just, that. Not just nicest comedian. I think he might he be really the nicest is. person. 100%. And he was saying, like, he would stay till 4 in the morning taking pictures with people. And like, not charging them. No, I've never seen anybody treat human beings so consistently amazing as Gabriel. Which is why he sold out Dodger Stadium. And he's doing. Couldn't he's going to do, like, do a I'm, second one. Yeah, I'm so happy for him. There's nothing Two? better. Yeah. Two. Even Dice is like, good for him. God bless his. Yeah, heart. it's amazing. That's incredible. Dodger Stadium. It's he just added another show, and the tickets are flying. Flying. I mean, he he's hilarious. Yeah. But to also see somebody care that much about people, mm-hmm. and also that's be that amazing. successful, that's proof to me God's real. That's awesome. Yeah, he, um, you know, they all used to work here in the, when I was waiting tables, Felipe mm. Esparza. I know mm. I say their names like that, but it's sort of a, a joke of Freddie Soto's mom. Freddie Soto's mom would be real sweet and be talking to you and like normal. And then all of a sudden she'd say, we were on vacation in Cancun and uh, like right. <laughs> just go right back to English. But anytime it was like, so every time I say a name, I say Felipe Esparza or, you know, you have to add to it. <laughs> Gabriel Iglesias. Um, Every time I wish I Freddie was here for the fiftieth. Like, yeah, I don't know where he is. There are there's a bunch of texts, but uh, yeah, I'm not gonna read them. Who mm. cares? We'll just do it without him. We don't need him. Fuck mm. Rick. He's fired. No, I'm just kidding. Um, and plus, he has a spot, so he may have pulled in and they pulled him on. That could be what that's. Oh, that could be. So, but um, so what else? we I had a million questions, Paulie, and now I forget all of them because of. We went. We got off course. What's your happiest memory of the comedy store? Ooh, that's a good one. Top five. Ooh. Rick, there's Rick. No, uh, Rick. We were just saying, Ba-da-boom. fuck Rick. Oh yes. Does he have to go on He's right here. now? Uh, it took him an hour. Da-da. This is my happiest Rick, moment ever. The comedy store. We literally store. were just saying, fuck Rick. He hate yeah. a, hates us. He quit Dean, us. Dean, shut oh, the door, guys. please. Hi, uh, everybody. It's good to see you, Rick. So, yeah. I, I, Still the happiest man that's filled was just... with darkness. <laughs> <laughs> I, 
Um, Guys, hour, about an hour and 22 minutes to get here. Okay, good I'm times. It. That means LA's back. I got the double police cars weaving on the highway routine. Okay. Oh, what mm. the fuck is that? That's only here I've seen it. It's you know what I'm talking about? Oh, yeah, they, when they slow down they, the traffic. They go in front of yeah. you. Wow, and then really? They, you and got they stuck on it. that thing? I was I've... like three cars from... <gasps> was it road <gasps> construction or yeah. something? Yeah, they usually do that when they're setting up the cones. Or if there's or an, accident. an accident. Like yeah, a few miles Congra- out. Congratulations. Thanks. I heard. <laughs> right? All the words. Yeah, yeah. yeah that, that must have been cool, right? Yeah, man. It was great. Was it the best ever? Yeah, it was very fun. The crowds have you talked awesome. about it yet on your podcast? I have not, no. So this nope. is the first this time. This is it. Look All what right, he did. You broke his cherry. Tell me more. <laughs> tell me more. Like, did he buy you a no, car? I found that out. I was so stoked for you. Me too. That's fucking man. awesome. He thought you were going to come in with a leather jacket, high collar, glasses, yeah. throw your What's keys up, at him. Dude, I, I, you know, I'm, uh, I perform exclusively in suits now on the road. So did you really? Uh, did you have he to wear a suit? Wear a suit? Yeah. Oh, that's, that's awesome. fucking hilarious. Yeah, he, uh, yeah he, he was just like, I think it would work better. It'd look more professional. I'm like, all right. So I'm out there looking like I, I just bought a suit to go to homecoming. <laughs> <laughs> just like this doesn't Here's your look cool. <laughs> this, this doesn't look cool yeah. at all. Did you buy it in Boston? No, I bought it here. Oh, so you travel with the suit. Yeah, I tried. Yeah, I had so my... he texted you. He's like, yo, we're talking about suit. Chris Rock, by the way. Yeah. So Chris Rock, right? Yeah. Um, so he texted you and he says, yo, wear a suit. Oh, he called me. Oh, he called you. Yeah. That's hilarious. He's a caller. That's He's older. There he is. Yeah. <laughs> And so yeah, he called and, and you, um, did you think he was kidding? I I honestly didn't think it was actually him. I knew you were gonna say that. The initial, I'm like, this. Could, I know so many people. This could be Kyle Dunnigan trying to ruin me. <laughs> <laughs> like that's what's going through my head. And it's this like, is, is this a radio the prank? Before the smack or after the smack? This is like a five weeks before. before the smack. Oh, so a long time ago. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, he told you you're opening for me. Yeah. In Boston. Yeah, he just said you're gonna open for me some shows on on this tour. And I was like, cool. Because he saw you in the main room? Yep. Killing it? Yeah. He uh, he came up to me afterwards. And I'm like, oh, shit, he's pissed. <sighs> I, I thought I was going to get bumped first. So I'm just like, oh, this, how long am I going to be here? But then they're <laughs> like, yeah, you don't want to go up. I'm like, oh, all right. So I went up and then um, no, I was standing in the parking lot and he came out. He was looking at me. I was like, oh, fuck, I'm about ready to yeah, get a get a talking to. Um then he's just like, you don't give a fuck. And I was like, yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. <laughs> and then he just busted all the balls of the other comic stand. He's like, you guys are fine. Don't get me wrong. But I was like, nice. He's putting me up above him. <laughs> Somebody gets it. Yeah, well, <laughs> looks, like, looks like someone has the best eye for talent in the business. <laughs> go on, Mr. Rock. <laughs> so go on. Uh, yeah. So then he called me like a week later and Neil Brennan was like, hey, uh, Chris Rock might call you. I'm like, okay. And then he <laughs> called me like immediately. But yeah, he just said, you want to come open for me? And I'm like, yeah. And then in my mind, I'm like, fuck, I really should probably go ask my wife if this is. Okay. <laughs> like, <laughs> like I take care of the tour. kids. and um, But yeah, then I went down. I was like, yeah, so I just said I was going to I'd be opening. She's like, yeah, you got to do that. That's <laughs> so like, Thank awesome. God. So. so he flew you uh, from L.A. to Boston? Yep, flew to Boston. Um, and then it was like it was like traveling with the Beatles. <laughs> it was like paparazzi everywhere. That was right after the incident, yeah. right? Yeah, this is two days after oh the Oscars. Goodness. And so everyone's trying so to get the first about this We'll have great. to do another podcast where you talk to us. We're going to just interview you. <laughs> I like it. I'm, I'm into awesome. it. No, I know, but this is what, yeah. what's happening right now. 100%. This is a big deal. I mean, yeah. you've been here. At the store forever, bro. Yeah, man. And this was like a really twenty years this yeah this year. And this is like a huge break for him. Yeah, it's amazing. So happy for you. And when it's it's a break from here, which is a big deal. Like you got seen here because obviously it's the only place you like to perform. (laughs) And it's the only place that'll have me, Eleanor. Let's be real. That's not true. Other places. I could probably do the (laughs) Long Beach Laugh Factory if I want to kill myself. Hey, it's left less time in traffic. Oh, we're, um, we're, we're going to so actually we're, bump you. There's a, a guy who's done comedy one time. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, get him up for sure. So tell us how it went. So you, you see you're traveling with the Beatles. Yep. Okay. Um, yeah, so it's basically just get in everywhere as quick as you can. How are the crowds in Boston? Wasted. 
I mean, and Atlantic City. And I they were yelling shit out about the whole Will Smith thing. Yeah, that. yeah, that was fucked up. Did Tell you get to destroy it. people? Yeah, Are you like his verbal bodyguard? That, more or less. It's just I go out and set the mood. I'm oh, like, <laughs> you're like an attack dog. <laughs> yeah, you think I'm, I'm on a leash? Frazier Smith told me the best story once that when he was doing morning radio, Ronnie James Dio was going to come in and be the guest, like at the peak of Dio's powers. And uh, he said when Dio showed up, there was two giant bodyguards holding Doverman pinchers. Wow. Barking, and then Dio was walking behind them, and I just always imagined Rick as those Doberman pinchers. <laughs> uh, that's what Jimmy and Joey used to. Hey, wow. hey Don, wow. hey Don, call call off your pit bull. <laughs> what they, what they really say? Yeah. <laughs> Don's like he's he's not my dog. He's just that's an independent human being. <laughs> call off your pit bull. That's what so it, good. always because Don obviously was in on D- O'Neill and Danish and I ruining their sets, but. <laughs> He just had to play it the way he could. It's comedy store fun, man. It, yeah. That's how, it's, so you, was, went, you went out just for two shows? We did uh, six shows in Boston and then Whoa. two shows in Atlantic City. That's awesome. Six show, where'd you play Boston? Wilbur. At the Wilbur. Mm. Oh, wow. Okay, perfect. Yeah. That place is so, dope. Great yeah, place. it's awesome. It's, a great venue, it's like yeah. comedy club on the bottom yeah. with like a two- the, the tears. Yeah, yeah, built above it. Killer. It's a gorgeous theater. It's beautiful. Eleanor, were you on the radio in Philly talking about Rick at one point? I said that he was opening for him, yes. yeah. Yeah, because I had friends. In Atlantic City. Call me. <laughs> I heard your friend Eleanor talk about your other friend Rick. It's kind of like you're making it because people I've heard you talk about are on the radio. <laughs> yeah, I do WIP, the sports okay, radio. Okay, that's what it must have been. I was like, so I they don't... were calling because they were like, what, you know, is this crazy? Like, and Angelo, the guy. Uh, uh, hey, Angelo, long Angela time Kikaldi. listener, first time caller. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Angelo was like, I'm never watching a Will Smith movie again. And I was like, wow. And so, these are Philly guys. Like, mm-hmm. so they were pissed. So, how was, because I saw Chris. I saw because I was across the street at the Pendry Hotel, mm-hmm. right here across the street. I was having coffee and I saw him walk by. And this was the night, the morning before the Oscars. Huh. So I call him like, "Yo, Chris, come here." And he's like, "Yo, what's up?" And he, we sit down for a while and we talk. And and then the ne- that next night that happened. Jesus. So I mean, what what? And he obviously everything was normal. But how's he been? Because he hasn't said anything. Yeah, he's. Seems good. Yeah. He's like, he's cool about it. Yeah. You know, it's just, he's like, it shit happened. Weirder. You know? But yeah. it was, but he really got hit. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I mean, it was, it was fucked up. Yeah. It's, the dude was angry. Yeah. He that's, might, but, he might have some issues. Yeah. <laughs> he yeah. Ha- he definitely has yeah. some issues. I mean, honestly, but I think he, it's a man just falling apart. Yeah. And the fact that uh, she came out, Jada came out and said, um, he shouldn't have hit him, bitch. Uh-uh. He should leave you. I mean, she, <laughs> she's disgusting. Yeah. I never liked that lady. Whatever. I don't care. for the, the joke was silly, whatever. But I really think he is just, because they're so public. Mm. Their life is so public, and they put all that out there. Their infidelity yeah. is so it, it, public. hundred percent. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they made, like, if you say entangle, entanglement, is that the word? Entanglement? Yeah. I was in an entanglement. That's how she described having sex with somebody else. Like, insane. People say that all the time. So they put it out there. People just run with it. So I, I can't understand. I have to go perform. Rick, this is Aww. bullshit. No, this is, no, he's, he, he's, come on. <laughs> I'm happy for you, buddy. <laughs> oh, there. plus, when did your album come out? I oh, came down here. Supportive Polly is the best. <laughs> Supportive <laughs> Polly is the best. Hey, take, take a look over there. Look at that handsome gentleman just standing right there. Yo, Whoa, that's up? buckets, it looks like. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look how what's handsome up? he is what's and up? tall. Yes. Does he want to come set, Rick. speak? Bye, what's Rick. Up, bro? Come back if you're, we're still here. So is that, what it was your take? Um, should we invite him in? <laughs> what? Should we invite him in? If no. they want, you want to come in? Look how cute he is. I can't get over how tall he is. Yeah. That's crazy. I can't see. Oh, oh, the I'm, light's I'm in your way. Light, yeah. It's his nephew. Yes. No yeah, that's, yeah, way. Caleb and Lola. Gigantic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, Lola's was too. Yeah, I didn't yeah. see it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, remember your mom used to call him Buckets, like after the Rick? football player. No, the, your nephew. Oh, I didn't know that. <laughs> really? So yeah, I remember yeah, when yeah. he was a baby in Chicago, we went to yeah, go visit yeah, him. Yeah, mm-hmm, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it's just amazing how whatever time goes by. You, you realize how old you are when you see, like, for me, when I see my nieces and nephews, I'm like, 
fuck, she's getting married. She's mm. having a kid. You know, yeah. you start freaking out. You're like, this is crazy. And the cats in the cradle Doodle and in the, the silver spoon. Yeah, my nephew Sean has two kids and is married and has a doctrine in nursing. I'm like, who am Shawnee, I? Shawnee, the one that used to yeah, come out baby. here from Penn State? Yes, my baby nephew. My little baby nephew has two kids. Oh, my goodness. So, yeah, uh, he married a doctor. That's Way to go, Sean. Hi, Shawnee. Um, good kids. So, anyway, but what it was your take on that slap? Like, honestly, the radio in Philadelphia, the reason they called was because they were asking, had I ever had an incident like mm-hmm. that? And I have. Have you guys? Like, I know nobody laid hands on me. <laughs> that's, not, that's crazy. But it, they've charged at me. Really? Just, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I never have. Really? Mm-mm. Wow. I remember that's and how Steve I became friends with Fat joy James. joy in your heart. <laughs> yeah, but that's how I became friends with Fat James. Did he attack you? No. Eddie Griffin was doing one of his things back mm-hmm. when I was like 2001. Yeah. I was 2000 maybe. And there was like a drunk, rednecky kind of guy. <clears throat> and Eddie was doing his thing. And the guy stands up and he was like, I have had enough of your lip, mister. And then the guy sat down. And then I'm, I'm get everything calm or whatever. And I'm like, <laughs> in the OR, you know, like at the ticket booth thing, and then something happens, and the guy just goes up, and I don't know where it came from, but I just kicked him behind, because he was tall, he was like 6'6", six, yeah. six, and I kicked him behind his knee, because oh. he was going towards the stage, and then I yeah. got him in a full Nelson, then all the tables, and everybody started to jump on us, and then I was like, it's okay, it's okay, and, I'm, and but then I felt like, the like a, I felt like a, a, a silverback gorilla. Right. And I was like, whatever this is, I can't handle this. And then I hear, I got your back, buddy. I got your back. And it was Fat James, James. God rest his soul. (laughs) And that's how we became friends because that guy charged this. I've seen it happen here. Oh, yeah. We were talking about Dave Taylor, you know, how insulting he can be. So he was like ripping this couple to shreds ripping them to shreds mm-hmm. and were people, were people laughing uh other little... people were laughing but <laughs> other the people. four <laughs> people at yeah. this table were not and they were very um i don't mean to say it without being they were waspy very mm-hmm. waspy very white khaki pants you know tiki torches no it was mm-hmm. before that but you know what i mean superior that bone structure money 100%. in the bank yeah so i was i'm waiting tables and i'm watching them and i'm thinking fuck they're getting really mad and it was a monday night because fraser was hosting and fraser go dave taylor got off and the guy got up broke the bottle <gasps> and put it behind his back and charged dave Whoa. he got right there to oh. Dave and I just jumped right in the middle of him. I go, Oh, I'm sorry, did I get your bill? And he, he was like, oh, like looking around me with this bottle. And I go, Sir, you're gonna have to sit down. You're gonna have to put that down and you have to sit down. And it worked. And he did. I don't know why. I don't know what Grace happened. But I was like, I'm gonna have to tackle him because there's he'll kill David. David's tall, but I don't think he could fight. Especially you... with a shattered beer bottle i know i was like what the fuck who did that frazier saw the whole thing and he was like okay cut it out yeah let's just get back to the comedy folks is phrase gonna be here tomorrow i hope so i hope so too i mean i they have a list of people l you know give give me the scoop i you just all we had to do was make sure if they didn't have an email we added an email but Mm. pretty much every name i mean there's gonna be a lot of people i just I'm a little nervous. Too, I'm happy to be right? here. Yeah, why? Yeah. Why are we ner- are you nervous? I don't know. I'm nervous. I don't know why. <laughs> I yeah, feel like I won an like, MTV it's, contest it's, finally. It's <laughs> almost like <laughs> stay at Polly Shore's house. Come to the Comedy Store 50th anniversary. But you did win a contest. Didn't you win a contest yeah. with Polly and that's how you got yeah, here? Yeah, I still can't believe we're friends. Like my girlfriend, like she thought like I was kind of lying. Really? She, yeah, she was like, so your friend... Paulie Shore, your friend, is letting you stay. Where did you see him perform? TLA in Philly. Yeah, I was, yeah, I was, I was hosting the best comic of Philly. A- out of TLA. 20 That's years great... ago, right? Yeah. 20 yeah. years and ago. So, it was, so he came out and, and 22 killed, years. did really well, and then he, yeah. he, he ended his show with fucking- Break he, dancing. Yeah, break dancing, <laughs> and then we started break dancing Piece together. Piece of linoleum, okay. And then he won the trip to London. Yeah. And then Dean and pa- Paulie was like, I, we did the uh, the worm together yeah. off stage. <laughs> I had no material whatsoever, but I was having so much fun. I'm like, yeah, I'm a he comedian. Was Chris dog. Farley. Oh, yeah, okay, yeah. He was doing Chris yeah. Farley. And then, uh, yeah. And then Paulie break danced with me, and I'm like, this is the greatest. Yeah. Because I like never Tell went on spring break, or I never did anything cool. And then like the coolest person ever was like, dude, you're really funny. You should be at the comedy store. I'm like, I will be. <laughs> 
I'm gonna go pee, but tell him, tell him the, uh, tell him the story uh, uh, of jo- the guy that jumped off the bus. Oh no, I'm not telling that. Story. You have to. Oh, I'll wait for you. Why? Uh, well, I, you get, you know the whole story. No. Is what? it God sick? Yes. It's okay. I, we tell it all the time. <laughs> oh, you have told it? <laughs> Ish. Yeah, a little bit. <sighs> it was I, fucking people weird. People bring him up and they go, what happened to him? And then Rick usually reminds people that he flipped out. But he's doing well, luckily. Good, I don't know God. what he was going through, but he he was hilarious. hilarious. He was a door Great. guy here. He was funny. Yeah, Love San Diego. He, yeah, he yeah. fucking. But I, I believe he's got his shit to get. Whatever Good. happened. I'm not sure. Hey man, everybody hits a rough patch or two in life. Sure, but I'm not one to ever judge anybody. Being ever. there, being there, how what it, was that like? Because like, were you on it's the horrifying. bus? Yeah. So yeah. and he just snaps and gets jumps off while the bus was still moving. Wow. And wow. honestly, like it must it was a miracle. Yeah. Like it, it was like what? Uh, I it don't it saved tell his story. life though. Yeah. To an extent. Oh, and I was very, very grateful that we found him and that he, yeah. he wasn't hurt. Right. You know, and that he wasn't just, you know. Yeah. I mean, I, I made sure, you know, that we. He's not a punchline. He's a fucking no, human being person. and he's a good guy. Great and person. It, that's the weird thing. Like people are go, you know, OK, like Will Smith. Right. Yeah. That's a snapping moment. That's a Bro, fucking everybody... snapping moment for him. There's just we live he's in a society a where there's person. no more compassion. Right. He's just not none. a bad person that's why like when angelo cataldi was saying like i'm never watching a will smith i was like really dude like co- like he's really going through something obviously i mean of oh, course yeah. i was making Happy jokes people don't act like that right like i was trying because we're on the radio to make jokes but i still see that that's two human beings in a situation all the time on a fucking world stage yeah and and it's awful for both parties involved neither party is you know, happy about the situation. Yeah. You know what I mean. So, yeah. I, I I do think. Did you see um, Gerard Carmichael's uh, oh SNL? I loved his no, monologue. I, I oh, loved his. Yeah. Did Gerard ho- did he host SNL? He hosted SNL, and his monologue was great. His monologue, That's incredible. It was just like, should we talk about it? Can we talk about? It? Like I retweeted it, and the amount of hate that people wrote nasty things about how this is the death of comedy. I'm like, I didn't guys... see the end of his monologue. Oh, it was so good. What did he, what was the end of it? Uh, he goes, uh, he goes, I don't know when I'm ever going to get on a live stage or on live TV again. And I don't know this man, but I need to help him. Cause apparently in his monologue that he probably, you know, like for comics, you, fantasize about something like that like if you get a big shot like snl or yeah. something you you fantasize about what your monologue would be right like what you want to talk about it's yep. exciting right and he probably had it all written out if i know gerard he's so fucking precise and yeah. on top of things that the minute he found out he was doing snl he probably wrote a monologue and then that happened so he had to rewrite it so he uh, Lauren Michaels came in his thing and was like, "Look, you got to save the world." He's like, "Look, I've been gay for forty eight hours. I got, I can't even save my family. Those homophobes. Like, I don't know what you want me to do with the world, right?" Right. And so uh, he goes, "I, I don't know when I'm going to be on a live stage again." He goes, "So um, I need to talk to somebody. Barack, what's up? How you doing? Uh, can you meet me at camera two? And then he turns and it goes to camera two, and he's like. The world needs healing. We need you. You sold us on hope. And he just like went into and people went crazy. It was such a good, well, tight monologue for me. For something for somebody that had to be forced to talk. Yeah, at the last minute. At the last minute. You got four days, five days, Mm. right? Mm. Where they start on Monday and Saturday they're doing it. Six days. So because he in the beginning, he was like, dude, it's only been five days. It feels like two years, and it's only been five days. Yeah. I just thought he handled it. Like, we were talking about Will and Chris. Like, both of them are human beings that are n- – neither one of them are excited about the situation. No. It's an awful, horrible thing. Whatever he's going yeah. through, I hope he gets help. And, yeah. you know, that's got to fuck up Chris. Yeah, he's bullied I his really whole bad. life. Yeah, I his fucking whole life. I felt bad for him. Yeah. He it took was, a – I got to be honest. He took that shot pretty good, though. He was impressed. Like he rolled with it. I'm yeah. like, hey, he didn't, he didn't get shook at all. It's like, Chris Rock. Yeah, but it broke my heart that, like, 
here's a guy from Philly who acts out like that, right? Mm. And then a guy from Philly won the Oscar, and it, it was overshadowed. Mm. Yeah, that's why I thought terrible. what Denzel Washington like, said was just so beautiful. beautiful. It's be- yeah, it, there's a lot right. of truth to it. A hundred percent, yeah. So, um, but it's a weird ass time. Every day above mm, ground is like a weird ass fucking time. Weird ass. I mean, the shit that's going on overseas. We were talking about that, like all that fucking crazy, it's a crazy time. And it, what, what I find so heartbreaking is that all this, all the suffering of the last few years hasn't made people nicer. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it's. I, I even. I still have hope, though. I think we are. Gonna I'm proud of figure you. This out. I'm proud of you for having hope. Do you have hope? Yeah. Good. Yeah, Boy, no, I, um, I'm working on. No, it. I, uh, um, I, uh, I, I think that um, we all appreciate things a lot more now than we did, and I think yeah. COVID, in a way, was good. I know, think COVID you know, because I think it, it 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 made us all unplug. Yeah, yeah. you know, it made us all unplug, and it made us, you know, I was I was a, a I don't want to say a coward, but I'm I moved out of L.A. because I couldn't handle the way that they're treating people here. Yeah. Yeah. You know, the government and the governor and the yeah. mayor and all that shit. Just like it was unlivable. Yeah. It was just like, you know, that's why I think most people bailed California. Agreed. Because, you know, my neighborhood's still overrun, you know, by by just this whole, you know, you can't do this. You can't. You know what I mean? And all mm-hmm. that stuff. And L.A. is supposed to be the opposite of that. Yep. L.A. is supposed to be freedom and, and you know, and, and say what you want. It's quite the opposite. Yeah. And that's why I think a lot of the guys moved to Texas. Yeah. Because in Texas and Florida, you could say what the fuck you want and be however you want to be. Mm-hmm. And it's it's weird because it seems like it seems like liberals are not liberals and and and, it's and, switched. and Republicans are are not Republicans. Yeah. Yeah. It's you switched. know, it's like you know, yeah. is that right? Kind it seems of. like that to me. Liberals it feels liberals that way. feel like very kind of you they know, want to control things. Ass are, t- ass are tight and very mm. kind of, and and it used to not be that yeah, way. Yeah, they I mean, used to back in the hippie days. The in the hippie days, it was the you know the, the the Democrats were freedom and say whatever you want, do whatever you want. Fun. And, and the now Republicans the oppi- were the and the yeah. Republicans were the conservatives one, but now it's the opposite. A hundred percent. Isn't that weird? It's crazy. Every time I work certain markets, you always test it with mm. a certain joke, mm. right? And depending on the response, you know what your crowd is. And so I did it in Detroit, mm. and these guys went fucking crazy. They were like, fuck yeah! And mm. I was like, oh shit, this is a full Trump rally right mm. now. Mm. Like, they were like, kill Joe Biden! I was like, whoa, 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 all I said was, I mean, I wasn't even close to that level mm-hmm. of making fun mm-hmm. of them. I was making fun of, I think it was just LA, mm. basically. Mm. And, um, but it, it was, Dice said, I was opening for him. We were at Detroit, um, the Motor City Casino. And it was, he goes, that crowd was like 1987. Mm -hmm. They were so wild. A fight broke out. Like, Mm. they were flipping the fuck out. I worked for Kid Rock, too. And they- Is he nice? The best. He seems nice. Yeah. uh, But their crowd, his crowds are like that. Yeah. His crowds are wild like that. And we're doing the Ryman theater on april cool congratulations legendary yeah it's a comedy festival in nashville and it's like um donnell rawlings and shane gillis and uh big jay olkerson oh it's a sick lineup so i'm excited yeah uh chris porter because he chris Porter porter also used to do kids um cruise so oh it's a kid rock comedy show yeah it's he's he's kicking off the um nashville comedy festival at the ryman theater and he asked me specifically to do it, so I was. Eleanor, that is all. That's my boy. Congratulations, yeah, that's people. awesome. But his crowd's wild like that, and I'm assuming they're Republicans, conservative, right? Because he's people get mad at him for his political Whatever. stance. I don't. I if you meet him, literally yeah, the nicest chill, guy yeah. on the fucking planet. I have a funny story about him. Really? Yeah, of course. Is it good or bad? No, it's cool. Oh, okay, it's, it's really cool. So. When he first hit, I was hanging out with Fred Durst a lot. Okay. You know, and I was in I was in New York, and Kid Rock was in New York. We were hanging out with Fred, and Fred did, was it, fuck, I think it was, who was in New York after, was Con- Conan was in New York. Yeah, it was Conan. Oh, okay. When Conan was had the spot mm-hmm. after Letterman. Yeah. Yes. Um, remember that was cool. That's when Conan in the was year fucking. two thousand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was like when Conan was fucking awesome. When Chris yeah. Farley was a guest on Conan, yeah, I was it just was like, great. 
record it, record it. <laughs> yeah. So we, me and Kid Rock went out on stage with Limp Biscuit when they did Faith. Oh, wow. So it's if you watch the video, if you find it, it's basically Fred and the band singing, and me and Kid Rock are in the background dancing. That's how no, how much <laughs> oh no one God. knew who Kid Rock was. Wow. wow. Yeah, this was at the beginning. Wow. Yeah, if you bring my name up to him, he'll 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 smile because I mean this was when he first started. That's awesome. Yeah. That's and he so had little cool. Josie with him. Yeah. Yeah. That's and and song. all and all that. Uh, he, oddly, um, Fred became friends with my nephew through a game they play online okay. and they got really close and oh. so my niece and nephew came out here and they're like oh we're saying a fred durst I'm, like, oh, I'm offering my apartment they're like yeah we're gonna we're gonna stay with fred i'm like god damn so cool. they became yeah. really close like my nephew's really yeah. close with him he's the sweetest guy we went yeah. and had um and i said i used to wait on you years ago when you would come in with Polly. And then he's like, oh, yeah. But how would he remember? You know what I mean? He probably goes everywhere. Yeah. But I remember him coming here and hanging out with you yeah. way back. Yeah. In the it's 2000s. Yeah. yeah. I remember when he let you use his bodyguard, Richie. Remember yeah. that, dude? Yeah. <laughs> so, Steve, Steve, you opened for me for what, 10 years? I, 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 20 oh, years, yeah, 15 yeah, years, yeah. forever. It's so funny. I mean, when he first came out. I remember, remember when, when came he came out and I pointed at my clothes. Oh, tell, all, tell. What? come on. It was like living with your big bro <laughs> big brother. I was like, yeah, me and Paul are going to be doing cool stuff. And then he would just give me the business. Like, I remember once <laughs> he oh, was uh, like, he, like, I'm like, I'm on a tour bus. <laughs> it was the best. So I would have to, were I would have to oh, pull Paulie's dirty laundry. It was the best. I was like, Louis <laughs> Anderson, right now, <laughs> I'm on fries. And that's when the, I was like. But that's how green he was. So I made him yeah, do yeah, that yeah. shit. You made me super. I didn't. I let him go on the row with me for a while and never yeah. let let him mm. go on stage. Yeah, just old T-shirts. Oh, wow. I was okay. Yeah, because it was hard for him. He yeah. didn't know. He was green. You, and plus, these people are paying a lot of money. Yeah. I always think of the audience. You yeah. can't you know, just it's throw like, You anybody. can't, like, just because your friends was them, oh, put them up. No. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like they're paying money to see. You got to have someone. So I was like, yo, this is the road. This is what it's like. Yeah. You know, and get yeah. the rhythm. And he and bought me a recorder. Like, and then yeah. he would sit and write after yeah, shows. I would yell at him. I would yell yeah. at him. Yeah. It was really He was hard. always giving me. Yeah, he was like Pi May. From Kill Bill, right, like right. no, oh. <laughs> I, yeah. but I remember so yeah. much. Yeah, and I remember no, one of the most a whole long history. That's oh, incredible. Yeah. Long history, but yeah. that's a good yeah. uh, thing to do. I've done it with a lot. of I was of just guys. gonna say, and I'm so a happy to see that guys. tradition go on. A lot of guys. I mean, mm -hmm. look at Josh Martin now. Yeah, he's a killer. I mean, he's, he's been killing it. Killing Kills. it. Yeah. So, but with Steve, you know, Steve was green off off of, out of Philly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And he, I don't want to say he was terrible. I mean, we were all terrible when we first started. Hundred percent. But his, you know, he was just trying to figure it out yeah. yeah you know what i mean and and then eventually steve just kind of started talking and not thinking about it and then eventually he created his own cadence yeah you know and that was just by not ever thinking about the jokes yeah, yeah. and just kind of like hey i'm just gonna sit and tell stories yeah and yeah. then once he did that he got then into the jokes, himself then the jokes started to kind of like you know pop and right yeah and they were like long stories but they were like there was at the beginning, there was no comedy. It was just like him saying, "Fuck yeah. it, I'm gonna, I'm gonna just tell stories." Yep. Right. Yeah. And then you, you surrendered, and I always kind of looked up to him on that because that's hard. Yeah, hundred percent. You know, just to go, you know what? I'm fuck, I'm fuck my act, <laughs> and I'm just gonna sit and talk. Talk. Yeah, yeah. we know where I got that from though, because you, it, I mean, it was Nelly was the number one rapper in the country. That's how long ago. Okay. It was. And I, we did two shows at an improv, and the first show I murdered, mm. murdered, <laughs> and the second show I struggled. And uh, mm. whoever we were with was like, "Polly wants to talk to you." I'm like, oh, "I'm gonna get the business." And you were like, "You know what you did different?" And I'm like, "No." You were like, "You tried to recreate the first the first show mm. instead of being in the moment and just creating in the second one." You were like. Your first show killed because you were out of your head. You were alive. Mm. You were in the moment. In the focus. You were like, you have to always bring that energy to prepared material to whatever you're going to do. Don't recreate, create. And I was yeah. like, Yeah. That's great. That was like one of the best. And I got that as an open mic comic. I got that. I was emceeing and I'm like, Oh, that's it. Yeah. That's it. You have to be alive in the moment with that crowd. That's what people pay for is that it's energy true. is for that experience. Yeah. But also, you, you had a upbringing like that. You, you weren't just like catered in like, oh, my mom owns the comedy store. I get to go on. 
You no, had to I learn. stayed. No, I stayed away for a long. No, I had to make it quick. You know, I had a lot of pressure on me to make it quick. Mm. But really? just back to back to the, just because people always ask me about you know stand up and, mm-hmm. and and acting yeah. as well. Yeah. And the first the first advice that I give to everyone is to listen. Mm. Right. You understand? So listen to the audience. Listen to the other actor. Don't go on. Don't go. I'm gonna kill him. That's what I learned from Richard Pryor, and that's what I learned from Sam. People are always like, "What'd you learn from those guys that you like so much?" I and mean, they listened. Yeah. So Richard would go on, and he would, he would, he would, you know, the audience would come, and then he would play off it. And if you sure. ever notice how Richard Pryor dealt with hecklers, it was very nice. He was very nice. Yeah. It wasn't defensive. Yeah. You know, like some comics get really defensive. Right. You know what I mean? But if you're really sweet, and then eventually you can hit them. Right. You, you know. He but, lure him in. Yeah, but and he, then, he's sweet. Yeah, yeah and then knowing he's going to smash Smart. him. Yeah. So that was that was uh, uh, the one thing I really learned about, you know, about stand-up from those guys, especially Richard. That's incredible. You said yeah. he was a super sweet human being off stage. Yeah, right? he was very Pryor. gentle. And he, he always, like, when he would park his car here, he would always kind of, like, he wouldn't, like, you know, a lot of comics that are that famous, they would just kind of walk in, you know? He would like stop and talk to every p- single person. I love that. You know, and just be like, I love that. You know, because he felt that energy, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, so. I remember my last night hanging out with your mom at the club. Ooh. And we were sitting on the belly room steps. Mm. She wanted me to sit somewhere specifically with her. We went for her booth, the steps. And then as we were talking, she was like, you know why we're sitting here? I'm like, because oh, you said. Because <laughs> you know? I'm following you around. <laughs> uh, and she was like, this is where I used to sit with Richard. Mm. And she said that he w- it was the only place in the comedy store where he could kind of hide. Yeah. Because Those people would look for him. They'd steps. walk through the, yeah, they'd walk through the bar and they're like, oh, he's not back here. And then he'd look down the hallway and they wouldn't, because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. he was up just high enough where they couldn't see That him. little inter, yeah. yeah. I used to hate when people came down the belly room steps the wrong way. I'm like, we are hiding here. You know, <laughs> like, get out. And all the waitresses would be putting on their makeup or doing coke or whatever. But, like, we were in that area. And so I get that. That's a cute. <laughs> That's so sweet. Well, why was there pressure for you to make it so fast? I mean, my thing is you're growing up in the, like your mom would say, the best comedy college mm. there is to get you know yeah. you're watching the greatest of the greatest you're watching prior you're watching Kennison, you're watching them every night and now you want to do stand-up how did that ever even come into your head well i i mean if ever since i was a kid whatever i got into i i did it 110 percent. whether it was yeah. break dancing can i tell was, a story yeah Okay. <laughs> one time i was opening up for paulie is one i have so many amazing memories Thank i love you that God. you're a break dancer yeah. how about this we're, I don't know, maybe it was Sandy's Comedy Club out in the oh, desert yeah, this or is something. When Ari and Steve were. Oh, no, it's no, oh, no, 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 that's no, my no, favorite, no, 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 no. Can I tell a Polly story, please? Fine. But so we're there's doing a that drunk guy too. that looks like the skipper from Gilligan's Island backstage. <laughs> okay, okay. And it's Polly's old little league coach. <laughs> Hammer, and he yeah, was Billy like, Kenobi. "So this guy stumbles out of my team," and, I'm, and he's like, "He goes, but let me tell you something. He put the work in." And Paulie became an All Star baseball little leaguer, yeah, right? I was on the All Star team, All Star team, and he goes, "This kid worked his ass off," and he goes, "That's when I knew whatever he put his mind to, he was going to be a success." Yeah. I mean, look at the house yeah. that I built. Some it's, it's gorgeous. Fucking, it's you know, ridiculous. I mean, it's took me on like, a tour. It's yeah. insane. So, me and Don Barris. But, but and him. I got I got that. I guess I got that from my my mom. You know, she's mm-hmm. really hard. Yeah, she was really hard. So I was really hard on myself, and I always um, I always whatever I got into. If I liked something, I really you know whether it was cooking. Yeah, I, mean, I got into cooking. I I was the sh- cook at the comedy store in Westwood, Westwood when right. I was fourteen. Wow! And I cooked, and but I was good. Yeah, people would eat and be like, "Fuck, this is good." Thanksgiving's you know I mean? at your house. Yeah, I cook for everyone for Thanksgiving. Mm. So for comedy, when I finally decided to do it, I I just took it very serious. Very serious. I yeah. mean, I took it more serious even back then than I took it n- now. I mean, I take it pretty serious of now. But back then, I would record every one of my shows on my little mm. tape recorder. I would go. I would go. Yeah, I would go and I'd listen to it and I'd rewrite the jokes. If you, I know we're all so fucking lazy, but if you were to if you were to watch your sets, yeah. you can really make your sets way better. If you just sit and watch your fucking sets game and film. listen to it. That's a hundred a game film, you're right. I used to run and listen to my sets if you and listen rewrite, to, yeah. Yeah, I mean because you because you can direct yourself. Mm-hmm. You know, you're like that sucked, that right? Go there. Yeah, yeah, blah, blah, blah. So I just, you know, for me it was just, you know, I took it very serious. 
and um, I, 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 I planned everything. You know, I got my manager, and my agent, and all that stuff, and and I just made it quick. You know what I yeah. mean? And then I, I did it a lot of it because of my mom, but also just because of that's who I was. You know, I didn't want to be like, you know, doing, you know, I didn't want to be like, oh, Mitzi's kid's doing it, and I don't make 100%. it to like 30 or 40. It's a lot more yeah. pressure. You know what I mean? So, Too much pressure. So it was just like MTV came into my life, you mm -hmm. know, when MTV needed me and I needed them. Right. You know, and, and what I did on MTV, you know, was fucking awesome. It, it was, was like, perfect. Yeah, it was like the timing was yeah. perfect. And it was all like, you know, everything kind of lined up. And then MTV was so big yeah. at the time when I did. It, and it was just like it fucking just was it blew up, you know. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, and then again, my mom. I mean, my mom like accepted me and let let me in, and and I mean, even when I was I became known, she she made me. That's when she made me a paid regular. Mm -hmm. But I was like drawing people to the club. Yeah, you know, like people were coming to see me, and she still was like giving me shit. <laughs> like you're not ready, you're not ready. You know, kind of like, and she was right. Yeah, because it was very much persona, but. It was for that time, yeah. Didn't you get, did, or is there any truth to this? I can't remember who told me. Could have been Alan, could have been somebody. Alan uh, Stevens. Um, you were in uh, Vegas. And oh, yeah. <laughs> didn't yeah. have a good set or something? Yeah, no, what happened was, is, is I was Sam Kennison's boy. Right. You know, wherever Sam went, I went. You know okay. what I mean? And, and I thought I was, like, really cool. Of course. You know, because he wouldn't? was. Who yeah. wouldn't? You're in that environment. You were a kid. Yeah, I was a kid, and I was obsessed with him, and he was so fucking funny, Fuck and yeah. he was, like, so great. <laughs> so when he got sued by United Artists for a took, you don't know the whole story. No, what's yeah. that? What's what took? The cursed script of Hollywood. Oh. Yeah. yeah. So he was supposed to play an okay. Eskimo. Yeah. I've heard of it. And yeah. um and he, he, he got sued by I think United Artists for, for, for you know, leaving leaving the set. Mm -hmm. And uh, Rick Ingram, ladies and gentlemen. We actually don't need you anymore. We're good. Hey, no, we're just almost kidding. done, Rick. But no, no yeah. come on no, in. Come back in. We'll do we'll yeah, do we'll, another we'll, one. We'll, we'll do another one when we're He's telling a Kinnison story about the script of Took. Yeah. Did you know so, that, that? Yeah. This is the cursed script. Yeah. See, yeah. that's good. Got I forgot Belushi the name of it. And... Yeah. Yes. So no, she was telling me about the story about Alan Stevens. That what was it? Vegas. He, um, he was in Vegas. Didn't have a good set, and, he, and Mitzi was charging at you. And yeah. he was like, "No, she's my mom." And Alan's like, hey, "You're about to meet the real Mitzi Shore." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, what happened was is um, can we shut that? Because I can hear oh, the sorry. whole thing. Yeah. Um. Oh. This is set up so nice, Rick. Smash the knee. Yeah. Go smash no, your nuts. Yeah, so so what happened was is I thought I was really cool. Right. Hanging out with Sam. Mm -hmm. And I didn't feel like I was part of the store. Right. But it wasn't Mitzi's lineup. Right. You know, this yeah, wasn't yeah, yeah, Mitzi's yeah. show. How this old are you Sam at this Kenneth. point? Nineteen. Okay. Wow. You know, nineteen twenty, yeah. 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 And um and uh and and Sam, you know, asked me to be outlaw number two. So I'm on the Sam Kennison show. This is when he got sued for a took. Right. So he got sued, I think, for like five, ten million dollars, and they settled and blah blah blah. But he needed to work. Yeah. So he went on tour to, to. So my mom gave him two weeks in Vegas. Okay. So that was the Dunes thing. So I was uh, Alan opened the show, and then I went on second, and then I think it was uh, Steve Kravitz or Mitchell Walters or no, no, I think I think it was uh, oh yeah Mitchell and then Carl and then Sam. So I did my set. Pretty stacked. And, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, it was fucking dope. Yeah. yeah. So I did my set, and it didn't. It was. I wouldn't say it wasn't good. I was just really dirty. Ah. You know what I mean? And she didn't. Ah, okay. She, you know, she had a problem with me working dirty. So, um, so after the show, <laughs> so after the show, I'm like just chilling with the with you know the guys, in 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 and she starts beelining and she, and, my, and Alan says say bye to your mom and hello to that bitch Mitzi Shore. Right, right, and right. And she right. basically <laughs> said she's sending me home if I don't clean up my act. Oh wow. Yeah, so I had to like rework it and I was like, "Mom, I didn't say f you, but I'm like this isn't your show. This is Sam's show." You right. know, he's packing it in Whoa. here, not the comedy store, you know, because he was hot. Yeah. yeah. Sam was hot. Of course. He'd tell out wherever yeah. he was. Oh yeah, at. he was yeah. fuck it was like fucking lines. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. And um and she says, Well it, while it's a comedy store sign, it's my show. Oh. Well there's a comedy store logo there. So um All right, checkmate, yeah. Mitchie. Checkmate. <laughs> feeling that, so, feeling that. No, but I always Look had it. it was you know, there was a lot of you know, I had to go to therapy with my mom. Yeah. Yeah. I, I had to go to therapy with my mom because there was times where we didn't talk, hmm. you know. 
Um, and it was interesting because we saw this therapist in uh, in Venice named Jack Rosenberg, and he yeah he was <laughs> I think he, he was gives a, the whole name. <laughs> he was great. cool. No, he was cool. He used to he used to he used to uh, record all all my all my uh, therapy sessions with okay. on the cassette, mm. and then at the end of it, he'd give it to me. And I had a couple with my mom, and I fucking threw them out. <gasps> you know, a long, t- long time ago. Yeah. Because I wasn't thinking, you know what I mean? Sure, who would? But, You're like, um, I don't want to relive but, this. But yeah, but then after, you know, you go to therapy, then we we ha- we were cool. Mm-hmm. But it was just, you know, it was it was a, a very, um, it was tough. <laughs> I bet. You know, it was tough being, you know, her kid and and she's gonna be to toughest stand up. on you. Yeah. And I mean, I moved out. Yeah. You know, I got my own apartment and I started making my own money. I mean, that's where you saw me in Hawaii. Yeah. Right? Yeah. You what? know, when I was, yeah. But that, that was, was later late, on. Yeah. That, that, that's that when was I was like in my late 30s. 90s. Yeah. Yeah. That I was love the first when, I time love when Rick, there's foreshadowing in life. I'm just like, this, no, look Rick, at this dude. No, what's funny is I was on vacation okay. in Maui with a girlfriend of mine, Nicole Bennett. Okay. And then Rick's Only. there with his fam. I'm there with the fam for. Maui oh, Invitational shit. Basketball Tournament. Yeah, <laughs> and he's in Maui with his family, dude, and he's like, fuck, there's probably... That's awesome. Smoking hot, that? babe. Right. I'm just like, unbelievable. Right. I have got to get out of college ASAP <laughs> and make so something I'm of myself. I'm the reason why he got into comedy. I'm motivated. <laughs> Is that what it was? That's it was awesome. It was, it was Polly and one babe Yeah. that was smoking hot in Hawaii. Wow. I was, I was already moving up the ranks at Stanford and Sons Comedy Club, guys. <laughs> I and just Craig Glazier was yeah. I just saw your boy John out there. Oh we yeah, had a great time. The she's yeah, we had a yeah, great time. He, he said so. Pretty much. Yeah. Paulie Shore. Josh Martin. Paulie and the she's. <laughs> that's, a, like, that's a killer right th- lineup yeah. right there. Sell that. Sh- <laughs> just do diners, drive-ins, and dives. Both those three <laughs> instead of Guy Fieri. What we were going to talk about was when uh, Simone and Ren Azizi and Ari almost got fired. Or no, let oh, me yeah. rephrase that. Did get fired. No, Opening what happened the was they got rid of the unpaid regular <laughs> because of it. Yeah, so no, many what, people were mad. No, what happened was is my sister, my sister had her her casino, her her you know gig, right, the Palm yeah. Springs thing. Yeah, the Fantasy Springs and something. So I would always, whenever my sister asked me to do anything, I would do it no matter what, whether it was a radio show, a show, whatever. You know, speak at her class. Mm-hmm. You know, I was like, oh, okay, yeah, yeah. I, I I don't want to say I did it reluctantly, but I wasn't like excited to do it. I did it for her. Course. You know what I mean? Sure. And then I brought him down. I brought Steve Renazizi and Ari Shafir. <laughs> right. You know, to open for me. And my mom came. <laughs> they're all they're all like employee kind, kind of in of, and yeah. out at that point. Yeah. My mom came to the show and she fucking lambasted them. Get over here. <laughs> Get the fuck over here. Listen to me. Listen to me. Right? Is it oh. true that you were laughing behind them while they were getting I don't, yelled at? I don't remember, I don't remember that. <laughs> I don't I'm know. kidding. I, I remember Ren Azizi coming back to the store, maybe like the next night or something, and just being like, Mitzi was not happy to see us. <laughs> not good. <laughs> because like, I think my mom was actually mad at me for asking you guys to open for me, right? Yeah. Oh, because I think like she were probably ready. Want, right. Yeah. She wanted, like, if you're going to bring some guys, bring da 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 da. Right. Not these fucking guys. <laughs> And right? we crushed. This is what happened. Yeah. I just remember this. And we I was all your crushed? mom's assistant at the time. Right. He was so mad at me because I would send him to my mom's house to take care of her. Right. I mean, yeah. he, he, there was, I, remember. I mean, he was That's happy the right about person it. to do it. But. but he was happy, but he was also kind of mad. He's like, dude, I can't fucking do this. Because he's got too big of a heart. <laughs> yeah. And it's, it's, it, it's hard. Sit down. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> sit down. Watch the TV. Watch the news. I'm so grateful, but it's so funny about life that like sometimes the stuff you're like, this is the worst. And you look back and you're like, I'm so happy. I yeah, had those but you memories. were resistant. You were, yeah, dude. You were Cause I, <laughs> yeah, dude. <laughs> oh my God. She would teach me. She would treat. No. She'd like shit. Oh, Screaming. she'd make me sit like, like, you know, like some Indian emperors style. have those little dogs they stroke. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah, what I would do. She'd make, make me on... sit crisscross applesauce <laughs> next to her. And if I just, 100%. if I just shifted my weight to knock it off, okay, <laughs> okay, no and I'd have to look up at her, and then like, I, and going then through all the papers, I would have to go from there to work. The, to- the, door the Tommy here. time, I mean, we can be wow. here for hours. Yeah. I know. It's I mean, a we sin. could fuck it. The Tommy era was amazing, insane. It was awesome. As I mean, far it, as it was, yeah, I mean, it was just bizarre. It was it, so yeah. bizarre. Well, because yeah. no, because what the, would happen was is that I, you know, like. When she was getting sick, right, it was fucking really hard on yeah. everyone. Of course, you know what I mean because she did. You know, like when she started having a tough time walking up the stairs, 
That you was know, awful. and then you're you're trying to get off me. I'm fine. I got yeah. it. And she's I'm like, not a wobbling. cripple. Yeah. yeah. And she and it was just really, yeah, really yeah, gnarly. So there was times where she's like, I can't get up the stairs. Yeah. So she would call the store up and make Tommy leave the fucking front front uh, cover booth and go carry and her. go carry her up the stairs as Renazizi or someone else took over the uh, the, booth. The, the, yeah. the, the booth. Yeah. And you know, and he did carry her up the stairs, and I witnessed it a yeah. million a lot, times. A lot, we all did. Yeah, yeah. yeah a lot. Well, I don't yeah. know if Rick ever got. I, I used to stay there a lot. Duncan, and he would do Duncan it. called me. I think I've told the story before, but mm. he called me. Hey, man, got a great opportunity for oh, you. <laughs> <laughs> hey, yeah, what's up, man? <laughs> <laughs> you could be Mitzi Shore's uh, assistant. And th- so many famous people have done this. Oh, that's hilarious. <laughs> I go, dude, everyone I know who's done it has gotten fired. Yeah. All right, man, had to give it a shot. Have a good day. That's great. <laughs> had to give it a shot. That's great. It's like, oh, okay. Um, but yeah, it was a tough 15 years. Of course. It was you awful. Know? And then there was that time that we had with her. The, yeah. That was very, very That was heavy. the intervention? Yeah, it was yeah. the intervention. So I'm in... I'm in Sundance, and Polly Shore's Dead is coming out. Right. So we're me and Scott, my brother, are there. We're putting up posters all over Sundance. Polly Shore's Amazing. Dead. Polly Shore's Dead. Like I was all stoked, and we get a call like she's in the hospital. Mm. You know, she's in the hospital, and then I get on the phone with her, and she's like, "Come get me, get me out of here." You know, they think I'm in Iranian. Oh, she says she's in Iranian prison. She would fall asleep to the news and it would it, stick in her head. Yeah. And she was she was, you know, she she believed Dementia. like she was like, a, you know, stuck in a thing, yeah. you know, in a jail. So we pretty much had to leave Sundance like the next day or so and get her out of get her out of um, UCLA and then physically get her to the house. I put her in my bed, you know, there. And then, and I'm like telling her, I'm like, mom, you need help. You know, you need someone to take care oh, of yeah. you. And then that's when, you know, I called, you know, we did an intervention. Right. So you want to tell them what happened then? Well, Fat James was there. Oh. Yeah. That was I'm sold already. <laughs> hey, we should get some dominoes before we do this. Fat <laughs> <laughs> James, calm down. Right? <laughs> yeah, he's sweating in his suit. <laughs> it's so Purple. Wet. It, it was blue, Toes but it's hyper colored when it gets wet. In fall. <laughs> what was his go to karaoke song? Exactly. How did he die, dude? Uh, How cancer. do you think? All the cancer. Uh, cancer. <laughs> Every oh cancer. God. Every single cancer there is. But, okay, so go on. But so. he, he's like sweating on the edge of the bed and he's like touching her. And then Jen Pryor was with us. Yeah. And she was the one that got us kicked out. Um, me and you and Ari and Shafir was there was Ari yeah he was okay. there okay yeah. and so we're all trying to explain how important it one is one at a time that she have somebody around yeah. the clock and she's you're not less of a shit. person but right. this is just something to help you and, no, and we're none of us are getting through she's, and she's you can see staring. her getting angrier she's she's, the fire is coming up you know and she's just looking like hating all of us looking but around and looking at yeah. Fat James like why the fuck are you here yeah and she just whatever so jen Pryor comes in with well richard fell and he broke his hip get out get yeah. out and then that was it Done. she kicked us yeah. out because it was a broken hip thing but it took even longer yeah. after no, that no 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 that was the beginning of the you know of the yeah yeah it, it took no that's so... when like in that that was like as her son mm-hmm. that's when i knew i kind of lost her you know what I mean? Well, yeah. You know, that's when and I was it, like, okay, this is really fucked up because she's she's obviously falling all the time. Yeah. You know what I mean? And um, this is a fucking you know, and she's she doesn't want to have a uh, 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 she doesn't want to have anyone help her upstairs, so she's literally going up the stairs by herself. Yeah, mm. crawling. She was crawling a yeah, lot. Dude. Yeah, dude. It was fucking. It was, when we went to the Dominican Republic to get stem cells. Oh yeah. Oh my god. It was. Yeah, I did that it, couple of those trips. In yeah. the Miami airport, you know, how international airport, it's so far, right? When you come in from another country and then you have to go all the way around. So I said, hey, what if we get them to give us a ride? Oh, yeah. What? Oh, yeah. No. We'll walk. Insult oh. Yeah. What am I, a cripple? Screaming yeah, at yelling. me in the airport. Get off of me. <laughs> right. These are the steps. Tiny, tiny steps. I never said yeah. we missed two flights. Two flights we missed. Who is it? Bobby yeah. Lee. Oh, God. Ew, don't lick the glass. He has COVID. He always does. <laughs> He's the creator of that. <laughs> I remember Dude, once what? before Alfred and all in. that stuff, 
It must have been right around this time. Alfred? No, it was before. It was Alfred must have been was... right after the intervention because I remember I would take your mom to get those glutathione shots. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, And when yeah. we're pulling in, there were people being interviewed for an assistant job. I'll just put it like that. <laughs> and I just saw the venom. Oh, not assistant caregiver. Yeah. But it was called well, that, assistant. Yes, yeah, and yeah. Peter was interviewing was people in the kitchen. Curious. And, um, and Mitzi yeah, was- Yeah, all these Asians in the f- yeah. kitchen, right? Oh. <laughs> Except the, the lady with the lipstick that Juan Carlos went an hour and a half out of his way to pick up and bring back, yeah. and Mitzi was the, like, the funniest, get her out of the here. The funniest thing was is towards the end of you know trying to find the right caregiver, every time I'd call an agency, mm-hmm. I'd like, who's your mom? And I'd say, Mitzi Shore, and then they'd hang up on me. <laughs> <laughs> We're not doing that. <laughs> no, seriously, dude. It's like she had such a shitty rep the, around they town. They have just one sign and it <laughs> says, do not accept <laughs> Mitzi Shore. Shore. It's like, she's oh, the only she one on the list. Banned. So strong. But though. that's the thing, though. It's like when you're, when she you're was the boss. She ready to give up. Like, right. So, for so long. Like, yeah. she created a world and was the queen of it. Yes. And she, Controlled she, definitely, every, couldn't she accept. definitely checked out, though. Yeah. Towards the middle of her sickness. Meaning, like, checked out. Like, she just wanted to get better. Right. Mm-hmm. You know, it wasn't even about, you know, the store. Yeah. yeah. You know, she didn't, I don't want to say she didn't care, but she, she didn't really care about it as much. All she wanted to do was just try sure. to Sure. She had get already better. given every single moment of her adult life. Yeah. And, you know, remortgaging properties and houses to keep it open. Yeah. Insane. Like, just every part of her body she gave. You can come in, you creep. She was so... When I got here, she would come in a couple times a week still. Yeah. And, but she would come in. It was the extremely slow walk from her mm-hmm. spot in the back corner Hi, of the parking lot. Bobby, you want to sit, sit here? down? Bob, I don't know Steve. You're, you want to share a mic the with guy. me? You're there. the guy. You want to share a mic with me, Bobby? No, Ellie, I do not. Don't call me oh, Ellie. Why do you I'll talk about my up. dick so much on other people's podcasts? Yeah, Paul, uh, Bobby. Yeah, they don't need to, well, don't yeah but they don't need to know about Bobby, it. Bobby, they can't hear you. Yep, here. You Where are you going? Yeah. <laughs> oh my God! <laughs> Sorry, I'm Jesus Christ. Rick, I didn't realize everybody was going to be afraid of you now. Yeah. They were, they were scared before, but now you can't. No, no, I'm kidding. I don't care if you talk about it. I don't give a shit. That was I'm it. Just kidding. Oh, then why did I sit down here? So we can no. look at your pretty face. <laughs> yeah. Look at your hair. It's glorious. I, I love know. you so much. What are you doing to it? You know what? Uh, your brother, I wa- no, I wash it now. Oh, your brother and Tony Rock should go on tour together called The Brothers of Comedians. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah, wow. tour. My brother needs to do stand up, though. He doesn't really do stand up. Uh, yeah. Well. His podcast is great, though. This hey, is- I like your energy. <laughs> it's pure, pure and simple. You've, you've always had a good one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you wearing flip flops? I am. It's summer. Oh. It's so hot, right? Look at this. Great. It's so fucking hot. Um, we I just wrap met it your. Up now that Bobby's. Oh, what were you okay. saying? I'm sorry. No, you know, go, go, go ahead. Go ahead. Like You're such a pussy. Yeah, yeah. I, well, I am a pussy. You met the niece and nephew? Yeah, I met your nephew and your niece. How yes. great. Just how like how just normal is. looking kids from the suburbs. You know what I mean? <laughs> not, not, that, not that the shores. No, the shores are be- beautiful people. And uh, I'm sorry. Oh, my, my God. What? Dude, I'm just dig saying. Dig a hole. What were you going to say before that? No, what I'm going to say, though, is, is that, you know, um, like if you had kids, you would be able to tell it's your kids. Right. Right. They would just be something wrong. <laughs> I mean, Lock abnormal. Yeah, no, no, no. I Let's mean, if you would Bobby look at them D. and there would be something wrong <laughs> in, in a good way in this in the way I relate. Right. Yeah. Because yeah, but when I see them, it's like you wouldn't imagine. There's just no way to imagine that they're shores. Yeah. 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 yeah well, he raised them in Portland, in yeah. right. Chicago. So well, he didn't raise them here. Yeah. yeah, yeah I yeah. would have raised them right in the back dumpster. I know you would have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bobby would have been the so babysitter. How you been? How you been? Good. I know you were like. You, you know what I mean? What? <laughs> I don't know. I don't want to say it if you don't want to talk about it. No, I've talked about it. What, what do you want to ask? Well, you you had uh, Are you clean? Su- substance yeah. abuse. Yeah. Because you were texting me and you, did you just do a line? What are you doing? No, I just yeah. have sniffles. <laughs> no. So Allergies. Are you, you know I love you. Love you. I've known you forever. Right? You, you are, Um, I wouldn't be here without you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. And you know that. Yes. Yeah. And, uh, um, it's uncomfortable uh, to say, but it got real. <laughs> you know what I mean? No, but uh, um, how are you? <laughs> I feel no, but without trying to be not trying. To yeah, I want to be more real. I'll be yeah, real. Yeah. I'll be real. I'll be real. Because obviously, we all fucking love you. You're one. You're my heart. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, well, for he's real. He's just speaking for a few people. No, I no. know you love me yeah. so much. It's no, really yeah. sad, actually. 
Your obsession with me is very really sad. But um, I've been better than I've ever been in my life because I weeded out um, cigarettes as well. Oh, wow. Ooh. And That's I can breathe one. again, and I'm not coughing up blood. I was coughing up blood, man. Oh, yeah, cigarettes? Saying, yeah, cigarettes and smoking all the weed I was smoking, you know? Mm. I would get these ch dark chunks of, like, um, red... That is allergies. Yeah. From the cigarettes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. serious. Yeah, yeah. I used to have it. Chunks of, like, red... And how many months in a row is this? What do you like mean? You went on a bender, they call it. Uh, four like, months. I sore. went on a four-month bender. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So and four months smoking weed, smoking American spirits. Dr. Rick's face. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Huh? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right? Yeah, I've been smoking since I was 18, yes. right? And um, so I got rid of the porn, cigarettes, um, drugs and alcohol. Wow. Wait, and wait, I've wait, been, wait, uh, wait. And this, this, this four-month bender, did you do drugs and alcohol too? Yeah, I did. Uh, what kind of drugs? Uh, just wow. weed and drinking. So that's not drugs, drugs. Not like Coke. But or... that's, that's different. But the thing is, is that when I, because of my, I don't want to get, because of my trauma background and stuff, and because of my OCD and the things that I have, you know what I mean? Obsessive compulsive disorder and whatnot. Um, weed hits me in a different way. I become manic. Got it. Right? Okay. So when I smoke so weed, I can't sleep or eat. Like, I'm like crazy. So what, do you like the high that it gives you? No, I hated it. So it gives you kind of It was of like paranoid. smoking. It was like, um, like I would get real, I would take 2,000 milligrams of edibles a day, Whoa. smoke 24 Man. hours a day. Mm. And then I would drink like, like I was in Hawaii and I was shooting sh shots of whiskey hmm. and I could not sleep. I, d I could not sleep. Yes. No matter how much drunk I would get, I could not sleep hmm. because the weed would get me manic. Yeah. You know what I mean? Wow. So it was, and I was coughing up blood and then I started, and then Bob Saget and Louis Anderson died and then I literally started obsessing about death and I was, I thought I was dying. I hate that. And then I, I became trapped in this prison in my mind. Like I, couldn't leave the fucking house. I couldn't leave my bed. Mm. It was fucking terrible. But wow. um, now, you know, I've gotten rid of all of that stuff, mm. and I feel... What's so funny, man? No, you look great. I'm so happy that was like a joyful sigh. Like, sorry. I, I laughed, I do, too. I don't Bobby, know you're, No, I, actually, but yours was pure. <laughs> yours was coming from a fuck, <laughs> fucked up place, man. Why? Why? No, I'm proud of you. I'm happy I think you're beautiful. You. Thank you. Well, we, don't, <laughs> we don't need to lose you. Yeah, I'm not. Yeah, no, I don't want to. Stop, true. stop, stop. Robert. Listen. Listen to me. Stop. Look at me. Look at him. Stop. We don't need to lose you. So do it for us at least. Being selfish. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. Because I got to look at your Tiger Belly podcast. All the yeah. Time, no, so. I'm doing it for um, myself. Yeah. Good. Awesome. Impressive. I like you. Bobby, you you like me. Dude, he looks great. He That's did, the best I, I've ever seen Bobby. I've Lowe. never, I don't notice when people lose weight. I'm not good at that. Like, I don't, he's asking about Chris Rock. That's funny. I don't uh, see weight. I only see color. So I don't pay attention to that. But I really notice his yeah. loss. Hey, he Bobby, 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 Show how, us long your you, body. how long you been like for two months now. Oh, Congratulations. Two months. Awesome. Congrats. So you're going to have a baby with your babe? Yeah. She's good a hottie. Good She's the best. Well, that's good. I mean, I'm serious it's about good. not losing him. You don't fucking you know, gotta dude. Say it. I mean, yeah, look at. Right. I mean, I mean, look at what happened with Kate Quig Quiglia. That whole oh, thing. Dear God. It's Terrifying. like you don't fucking know, dude. Yeah. Good. Luckily, he wasn't yeah. doing coke and all that shit. I mean, yeah. it sucks. Weed and beer is. Well, no, but I, I love Paulie's response. He's like, drugs. It's so great. I'm like, that's what I was thinking. Well, that's what I was <laughs> thinking. Only, only Pauly can say. Like, right, right. But, we can't say I, it. Oh, really? No. Uh, I just mean, he looks at you as like a. A mentor. Oh, yeah. Got it. So like you can say like, it's not really drugs, man. Yeah, but 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 I, to, I get his what he says, to his defense, pot that fucks him up. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't realize that. Most people that. it doesn't do that to. Yeah, mm -hmm. making anyone manic is a terrible situation. I, when he was smoking, he would be up here and I'd be like, "Did you go up yet?" And he's like, "I don't think I should. I just need to get high." And I was like, <sighs> "Whoa." So, good for him. Glad he's not. It's you know it's 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 you know what's going on in the world and what the fuck is it's definitely a lot fuck more fucking fragile these days and more eggshelly and, yeah. and everyone's just there's this there's this thing that's happening that wasn't there before yeah and so it fucks with us you know and and looking at your you know someone gonna say something look at all this me too shit oh my you God. know and all this canceled yeah. shit and all this shit that's happened to so many people. You know what I mean? And I have friends that had this happen to whether it's comedians or people in the business sure. that, you know, that this happened to. And it's just, I'm not 
saying whether they did it or not do it, but th- this is happening, mm. you know, and it's it's a scary time. It you is. You know, and people are dying, and who it's just fucking, it's, you know, and the stuff that's going on overseas and COVID and, and you know, and when you COVID's travel here, now, it's, it's, gone, it's, yeah, it's, it's here, like, it's gone. But, it, yeah. but if you flash, flash I got forward, it, guys. flash mm. forward to, you know, <laughs> 20 years ago yeah this wasn't this this world didn't exist like that no i was with mm-hmm. a girlfriend of mine the other other day and she was like you know whacked out from instagram and just like you know this whole kind of addicted to it, the, yeah this whole yeah this addicting. thing and yeah. she's like she goes she looks at me very serious she's like what was it like back then you know what i mean i'm like it was awesome she goes yeah. god i wish you yeah. know and even when you walk down sunset you know, if you walk, we had, we went and had a chin chin. There's all these billboards and everyone's Aww, this and chin-chin. you know what I mean. And it's just like, it's fucking yeah, overwhelming. It, it is. is. It's over- like you so said much it, You stimulus. said it best. You said this doesn't seem real. No. Well, yeah, it's, yeah and it's everyone a is cartoon of a city now. Everyone it's is like, living for the fake life right. online. It's the Matrix. So, like Ooh, 20 years yeah. ago, I had a cell phone, but you couldn't do anything on it other than text or call. Right. Yeah. And. I still was just living in the world right. instead yeah. of focusing on this. Yeah. Even when I'd be in a waiting room, I'd basically just be judging people, <laughs> which was way better for your mind than sitting there and reading right. who likes right. your stupid fucking two-sentence bullshit. Yeah, it's oh, turning everybody into a narcissist. Like it. Yeah. Everybody yeah. thinks they're the king of the world now because yeah. yeah. whatever we want's right there. And then you have to interact with the world where there's people but, and they have thoughts and feelings and we're losing our But compassion. the thing that I also I didn't understand was years ago, if you wanted to get in the entertainment business, you moved to L.A. New York. That's it. That was it. Yeah. Yeah. You know, now it's it. like it now it's matter. the opposite. Now it's yeah. like this. So everyone's it's, got these. It's a different fame, though, because it, now it's so individualized with your fan base. Mm. So yeah. no one is going to see you perform in wisconsin because they saw you on three episode arc of home improvement right <laughs> they're doing it because you have a youtube channel or yeah. you've built up a fan base through a podcast or you're on biodome sorry right. well, I, well that, no i was lucky deal. i got in early dude i fucking yeah. so well happy. you got it when it was real i remember yeah. I, got, I was so stoked i mean i pinched myself every time on tour no like yeah uh, luckily uh, stoked yeah, right that i got in you know, yeah. and I don't have to rely on all this other shit. I still do it. Sure. You know, but I'm fucking lucky. Yeah. It's terrible. I'm, I'm awful at it. Everyone keeps feeling like you have to do more shit on social media. I'm like, I, I feel like I feel like a fraud. That's against my brand. Right. Like, yeah. Well, first of all, you need to get a brand because if what you don't exist, my, yeah. my brand's not caring. They're like, yeah, that doesn't work really well with social media. <laughs> so now I'm just going to start pumping out. Uh, I don't care videos um, yeah. and just, you know, try and really build that the I don't narcissist. Uh, I'm smarter than people, but not as smart as I think I am base. <laughs> what do you, what's your platform? Are you going to do it on YouTube? Uh, what are you, I'm not going to do Q-Anon. shit. QAnon. He's you going to buy Q-Anon. some lights? Uh, if I could get in. That would be <laughs> hilarious. He's really I big on this, the secret dark web. I would, I would die, dude, if he got into that. So <laughs> crazy. So funny. And it was all fake. Oh, my favorite like, story of me. <laughs> That's Q <laughs> right there. He's the guy that invented it yeah, all. Yeah, he started it. One of my favorite uh, Rick on the road with Pauly stories mm. is on the radio when they were trying to fuck with you. Oh, yeah. And, and they, they, wanted you to, they wanted you to do trivia. I think we were like this? in Dayton, maybe. I think okay. we were in Dayton, Ohio. <laughs> and they were like, we're going to do trivia with the Wheeze. Oh, and, and you're like, oh, this is always terrible. <laughs> And the guy was like, oh, you got to do it, man. It's fun. You're like, I'll have Argus do it. And so I, I just oh. did it as Argus. <laughs> and they're, they're like, Argus? And yeah. looking at me like, I thought they said, all right, Argus. And then I got them all right. And yeah. it just worked out where I'm like, this is so funny. That is Generalissimo like- Francisco Franco. <laughs> the guy was like, why do you have Rain Man? I, I, you know what? I love the road. I don't know about you guys. Do you, do you I like do. Uh, with, When I'm with friends, yeah. it's, it's the with greatest friends, thing it's great. ever. Yeah. And that's why I'm fortunate. Like, even going with Andrew, I love it. We have, yeah. all we do is But what around. about, like, forget that part. What about just being on stage in, oh, of in, course. in front of in front an of audience? Strangers. Yeah, in front of strangers. Yeah. Like, in a different town. Yeah. It's pretty yeah. awesome. Yeah, I mean, Unfamiliar uh, territory. Uh, yeah. Other than La Jolla... This is the first time I've performed anywhere since COVID. Wow. So wow. It was it was nice. Yeah. It was weird just seeing like I'm like, oh my God. 
I do a joke here when I'm like, am I attractive now in 2022? And people will look, audibly say no. Yeah. <laughs> I did that shit in Boston. And there was like five people like, yes. <laughs> I'm like, well, that ruins this bit. <laughs> and it's because you guys are so ugly. that. <laughs> Tell uh, what you did to Atlantic City. Oh, oh I just. Simone will. I just told him what a pile of shit that movie Rocky is. How oh, dare you? Good. Did he they did Rocky. they just boo? They didn't they didn't boo. They they seemed to laugh just like in a what an well, asshole. Well they must have just respected your hate so much. I, I was, yeah, I mean it's <laughs> such an angry place they're like, hey the man can hate. Like, uh, yeah, I was I was thirteen. I don't hate agree no with reason. what he hates with, but how he hates I, it. I love how, how long, he hates. How long do you do Some 20? people just hate for no reason. Uh we were doing two shows, so I was only doing fifteen. Broke your thumb. But in Atlantic City, the front rows had to be average age, 80 years old. It was no. all the high rollers. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I walked out unprepared for that and then was genuinely just like, they oh, they shit. turned the house lights up a little bit for oh, me no. so that I can see the crowd. Oh, and no. they got a camera on them, so whoever I'm crowd working, oh, they can see fuck. on the big monitors. It's like monitors. Rickles 2.0. <laughs> oh, wow. It's great. The look on these old people's faces oh, when I started riffing into no. them. And then all of the decent human beings who are you know, further back than 10 rows. Just loving someone uh, being mean to these old people. Uh, well, I remember <laughs> one of my favorite opening up for Pauly stories. We were on the road with Bobby Lee. Mm. I MC Bobby featured that, Pauly headline. Yeah, this was this was ten year, eight years, twenty years ago. No, uh, but in a row. Oh yeah. Well, we were at Charlie Goodnights, oh, yeah. and I was so Detroit. new to comedy yeah. that I would watch people walk in, and I go, "That guy will like me." I'm not going to get that guy. <laughs> that is Maybe so insecure, this. Steve. Oh, yeah. It's like 20 years wow. ago. Wow. And then it's an early show, and there was four very old people. Yeah. Sitting, and I was like, they know my mom. Like, <laughs> for whatever, whenever there was somebody that looked like they could be a mom or a nana, yeah. I'm like, I'm not. That's why I started wearing sweaters, because I was always afraid somebody would know my mom <laughs> in the audience. And if I wasn't dressed properly, she'd be like, Steve and Anthony. Um <laughs> So it threw me off. Sweater comic. Yeah, yeah just so in case my mom gets Mitchie, a report. It's what Mitchie wanted for Louis Anderson, and somehow you 100%. took that role. Yeah, and then there's the four old people, and I'm like, I can't do anything mean. I can't say anything filthy, and I struggled. Then Bobby Lee came out, looked at the old guy, and was like, I bet you still eat her you-know-what. Then the old lady started dying laughing. He does. And then he was just doing <laughs> the filthiest stuff. And I'm like, old people are filthy? Like, he I didn't does. know. It was great. Some grandma's letting loose and talking about they loved it. getting it's that box so munched. Funny. What about the merch? Uh, <laughs> oh, wait. All right. Dude, you guys have merch. to bring it home. I got to yeah. go up and okay, do my got, spot. Yeah, yeah. So okay. you guys right. do it. I'm going to do this, Rick. Wow. Once. Whoa, look at these legs. Whoa. I'm a Is that easy man. rider? For God's sake. Easy. Jeez. Oh, and then she just bends over. Perfect shot for the camera. We're going to have to meme that, Winks. <laughs> meme that. She's gone. She's gone. All right. All right. So there we were. <laughs> What's your best Eleanor Fox story? <laughs> Tell her. I remember one time, Mitchell Walters. <laughs> Um, it was no. me, Marky Post. <laughs> I was there when you invented Argus. We were in the pool, me, you, and Carboni, and it was the oh, I yeah. knew first time I opening for the Wees on the Road. Argus. We were in uh, San, San Jose. Jose. Yeah, yeah. It just no. What what happened? And I still feel kind of bad, but not at all at the same time. Was when I started working here, people were like, saw that I just made fun of a lot of things. It was I was pretty open with it. They're like, hey, you can make fun of anything here, but don't make fun of Argus. And, you oh, were like, so and they're like, because that's like Mitzi's yeah. guy. I'm like, okay. And then my mom just like, do it, do it. Yeah, yeah. And then he would stop and talk to me, and I would get stuck oh, with like no. a, a 15, 20 minute, well, so Greg Eagles, and you're like, I don't even know <laughs> who he's Eagles. talking about. It was I me. This, I can't wait to give Argus a hug. That's a whole other story. Yeah. What I loved about you is whenever you would tell stories about people, like when you were a door guy, you'd be like, so I, for, I forget the lady's name, but like you would immediately go into their voice. So so and so comes in and she's like, hey, Rick, do you think you're funny? Kathy Lewis. <laughs> oh, that's who it was. And I would just would cry. And then like that's what I, I would just wanted to be near the laughs. Like I didn't have to. Cry. I just wanted to be like. Where's Rick? Yeah, people are always like, you're so funny off stage. I'm like, it's literally just inside jokes. I'm like the king of inside jokes. 
that's why my crowd work works because it's it's just we're making fun of something we're all experiencing so you can have topics and if the crowd isn't on board with what you're talking about then you're, you're going to lose them yeah. yeah but if you're just making fun of people there then everyone who's there will, will like it and i don't know if it'll transfer to a i always thought it had film, to do with but, your integrity for comedy as well though because i remember you just being like that's not how you really feel, or that's not genuine, or that's not really who you are. I, like, yeah, being a fraud is like the worst thing in the world to me. Yeah. That's why people, when I was growing up, were always like, you remind me of Holden Caulfield. I'm like, well, that guy's a fucking psychopath. So. And a phony. <laughs> and, a fo back. and a total phony. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, and, you know. Yeah. I, I, I always thought that. I never, I'm, I'm, now I feel like, okay, my work here is done. My yeah. comedy nerd brain. Yeah, man. I just can't deal with it, and, and that's why I'm like people are like, why don't you move ahead further? I'm just like, because I, I don't, I just can't care. develop these fake yourself. relationships. Yeah, it makes me feel bad as a human being. Mm. Yeah. I'm trying now. Now you know I've got kids. I'm just like, fuck this. Yeah, time to be a fraud. See what I can do. <laughs> can how you do, name I, how your do I next album fraud? How do I fraud my way to the top? Sell out. <laughs> In my mind, that's what it is. It's just like, like what. And they got us a uh, sponsor for the podcast. Oh. I'm like trying to read it. He's like, "Can you do it natural?" I'm like, "I can't because I feel like I I'm selling out." This. Right, 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 right. And he's like, well, "What are you talking about?" Yeah. He's like, "Your brand yeah, like, is you don't give a fuck." So I remember just doing do it and don't give a fuck. Podcast like, oh, with yeah. Mark Ellis and those guys, and when they tried to, not Mark, but like the producers wanted to bring in these. And they started to tell us stuff we couldn't, couldn't do. And I was like, okay, later. I, I was there. I, I was there for that left. episode. Yeah. That was the podcast he, was, he, he did, did in the Valley, he, right? he did this movie, yeah, movie podcast, and I go with him one day. And the guys come over like, hey, could you not make fun of this? And you're like, what did we say? And whatever it was they said, you said it was like not even slightly mean. Yeah. It was just like a joke involved with yeah. saying the sponsor. And then Steve was just shut down. Yeah. And I'm like, what's going on? Yeah. And the other guy just keeps going, what do you think, Steve? And Steve's like, I don't know. Yeah, it's like, I, oh, this is I full protest. Went back. I know. It was the I best. So I, you were making nothing. So yeah. that's how I always look at him. Like, yeah, it's like, you can't. I just don't care. Yeah. I don't know. I'm trying to care. Um. All right. Do you guys have stuff you want to promote? Uh, yes. I got nothing. Yeah. Dates? Um, my one man show. Nice. Where yes, can they see I'll it? I'll be at uh, Dynasty Typewriter in oh, August. Oh, I love that August. Okay. So that'll be cool. And then, uh, not, what am I saying? August. I'm fucking uh, retarded. April? Yeah. No, uh, it was like August 29th. It was, I don't know the exact date, but it's in April. Okay. And then also New York. I'll be playing Brooklyn with it as well at, um, shit, I forgot the name of the place. It's on know. the website? Yeah, it's on my all stuff. All right. Yeah, go to his website. And yeah. Check it all out. And, and Steve, congrats. Thanks, man. Yeah, yeah, good stuff. Very excited. I just hope it's the first step towards that sitcom. I, I had a dr prophetic dream about you years ago with that. I'm hope I'll, I'll take anything. If they want me to be a reality star, I'll do it. I don't care. Sell out. All right, thanks, guys. Love you, dude.